Yo, what's up chat? Here we go. I should have like tested my scenes before I went live tonight. There we go. Okay. Hey everybody. Look at that. We got new subscriber badges up in chat. What's up everyone? Roz, I see you. We got Tree Leaf up in here. Tree Leaf saying hello Max, this is Tree Leaf. Good to see you, Tree Leaf. This is Max F. <laughs> What's happening, fam? Good to see you, Review. What's up? What's up? Flipped webcam? Uh, no, this is what we normally do. We normally have it here, and then I think it is transformed on the other side. Um, so that might, that might be the case. That might be the case. We have a different light in the background today um, that's shining a bit on the wall. I don't know if I like it. It's definitely brighter in here because of it, though. Ah, <sighs> a little bit better natural light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Dale, um, Dale is responsible for all of our logos. Dale's snail, total, total pogs in chat for Dale. I've got quite a glare on my glasses tonight, too. Woo! Contacts were hurting today, so it's all good. Yo, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate that, best gals. You could use your Twitch Prime anywhere, and you've made the mistake of using it on me. I appreciate that. What's up, bueno? How's it going, everybody? Man, what's up, chat? Darian, what's good? Oh yeah. Chat is popping off. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for a Lin montage build tonight? We should, uh, we should just cut right into it. We should just get right into it. So I'm not building for like four hours tonight. I unboxed this thing to get a little bit of a look at it earlier uh, today. It is sharp. And I mean that both figuratively and literally. It is um, uh, just a good looking, you know, TKL, but then the edges of them aren't chamfered or beveled or anything. And so it is, it is like the edges of them on the bottom are actually sharp. My friend got the raffle for the free build. Oh, nice. Yeah. What's up, Vescals? Yeah. Yep. Jans. Jans is your friend. That was a, that was a fun build. The, uh, the Alice. Or was that, or is it someone else? I know we've done, I know we've worked on Jan's uh, Lou Brigante Alice already. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I know, I know there were a couple of those that were still pending. Yep, I'm standing, I'm standing by. I have the Black Kings, the 75 v 2 Oh, nice, okay, cool. Yo, Unilover, is it? Unilever? I don't know how to pronounce that. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime, though. Man, more mistakes were made in chat. Oh my goodness. You guys know there's like good keyboard content creators, right? Like you don't, you don't have to subscribe to me. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. We're having fun with it. You know what, chat? It's an extra, it's an extra special week. And let me tell you why. There's a couple things going on, but first and foremost, and you can never depend on when this is gonna make it, but we have made it to sweater weather. I walked outside and I was walking the kids to school this morning, definitely needed a sweater. I was wearing a short sleeve t-shirt, I was like, Oh, it's here. I've got my window open right now. Not those two, 
but there's a third window right there. Got that thing opened. I've got a nice little breeze. Oh, it's nice. And it's also my kid's birthday, one of the two. So it's a big week. Hope everyone is having a good week. What do you guys got going on this week? Anyone have any good mail days lately? Expecting any mail days soon? Got a couple things coming up that I'm excited about. Let me see what the actual weather is right now. It is 54 degrees right now where I'm at. I think our high today was somewhere in like the low 70s. I went out for a walk during lunch. It was absolutely fantastic. Hey, Max, can't stick around. Got two exams in the morning. Good luck on that, sir. And thank you very much for the sub or for the three months there, pizza guy. Thank you, thank you. We got the hype train kicking off. Let's go. Happy birthday, child of Max. Yeah, so this is uh, this is Charlotte's birthday. Uh, that'll be uh, that'll be this Wednesday tomorrow. So. My wife is staying home with her. They're actually going to a salon to do like a little mini spa day. Just my wife and my four-year-old. So I'm taking I'm taking the two-year-old to school in the morning, and then I'm going into the I'm going into a client site actually for a little bit tomorrow. So it'll be it'll be so funny. I lost it tonight. I already told I already told Justin and Yeffy about it. I absolutely lost it earlier tonight. So they were all they were all amped up. And we're playing we're playing in our living room, which is basically like an extension of the kids' room right now because we don't have a formal dining room um, at the moment. And the four-year-old grabs this little play shopping cart and is just sprinting, doing a lap around the house. And the house actually has, like you walk in the front door and there's a staircase in the middle that goes up to the upstairs. And so there's a, there's like, you know, that, and then there's a big circle around that. Hardwood, hardwood, hardwood. And then there's a segmentation where, or a separation where it goes to carpet. She comes around the blind corner, for me, I'm sitting in the living room. She comes around this blind corner and eats it in the biggest way possible. It was, it was one of the most fantastic things I have seen in quite some time. That makes me a bad dad. That's, that's okay. I'm fine with that. <laughs> so, okay, let me give you details. This little shopping cart that she's like pushing around as fast as she can, like as fast as her, and she's a big kid, first of all. So she's a big three-year-old. She's she's just transitioned into preschool and she is already probably one of, if not the tallest kids in her class. So she's not a little dainty three-year-old. She's got my height. She's pushing a little one-year-old kid's toy. It's like the Fisher Price shopping cart. The front wheels for this thing are not really locked in. They just have like a little insert where the bar, the steel bar, wheel, wheel, steel bar that goes between them, that clips into the front of the shopping cart, just with pretty much like tension, right? She hits the partition from the hardwood to the carpet. Of course the front wheels pop out. Like, and when I say they popped out, like they exploded. Like she comes around, she comes around the corner, the wheels explode off and I'm already, I, obviously, she had the momentum. You you know where this story's going already. But the look on her face, and, and she's holding this shopping cart, her arms start wobbling like this because there's nowhere to go. I mean, the shopping cart has dug into carpet now at this point, and, and her arms are wobbling as she's like, and she goes up, she endos over this thing. She literally goes up and over the shopping cart, and her face was just so good no corners of any furniture in a 10 foot square radius so i immediately start losing it like i was laughing i was laughing right in her face i felt bad but it was like a jackass level wipeout i haven't seen anything that good in quite some time i feel like i'm clipping a little bit right now in chat too hold on i'm watching my levels as i was telling that story let me turn this down a little bit let's see if that stops the clipping I feel like I was maybe a little bit loud. 
Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I could not help myself. Like, she came around that corner and her face just, oh. I'm an evil person, clearly, but it was so funny. It was so funny. What's up, Dodo? Howdy to you. Oh my god. It was, yeah. It was a great, it was a great moment. She then proceeded to fake cry for about two minutes. And like, I mean, total fake cry. Like, uh, not like, she had, I don't think there were any tears. And I picked her up after two minutes because I was like, all right, come here. She elbows me in the face on accident, starts laughing. So I'm like, yeah, I knew you were fine. <laughs> What's up, Sam? Good to see you, buddy. I'm good. It was a good day. I'm just telling a story about how my kid ate dirt. Oh, it was just a good day. <laughs> that's not why it was good. Uh, that's not why it was good. Oh my god. Max said I would be here. Turns out he's right. What's up, Art? Good to see you, buddy. You had to swing by. Oh yeah. Hey, are you picking up an A7C? Have you been watching? Have you been watching that? Bone Fort, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. Alright, chat. I've been I've been recanting stories. I've been telling you guys about my week so far. Let's cut into a little overhead here and let me show you guys what we're working with here tonight. Um first things first. So we're doing this build here tonight. We've got some cherry MX blocks. They've been Filmed and looped with 205G0. Oh, before I unplug my keyboard too, let me update that build command. I was about to forget and not do it. That was gonna be two builds we've done without me updating the build command. I'm so bad about remembering to do that. Okay, so tonight's build. Cherry MX. I don't know where they were sourced from, but they're five pin. They're five pin vintage blacks, so kind of lit. They might be a they might be a G80 variant. I'm assuming. Uh, Loot and film. We're using a set of C3 stabilizers that have been looped with Crybox 205G0. You know what we're gonna do tonight too? I think we're gonna dress this thing up. So it's a, oh, well, I won't, I won't, I'll tease you a little bit. I won't tell you what color it is yet, but the build command should be updated here now. Yep, that looks good. And then is Gamble working tonight? The point system is not working properly. I really want this to work properly. I'm hesitant to enable it in Streamlabs because I don't think it's going to add the right points. You guys see stream elements. Why is it not working through stream elements is the question. Let's see if I can do slots. I don't know how that thing works. Let me see here. current keyboard you're looking at right now, Bueno, is an LZ Physics. An LZ Physics built up with Soho switches, yep. I like it though, Artemy. I think that A7C, just from an aesthetic perspective, looks really sharp. Um, so, I, uh, like, I, it looks to me like just like the perfect street camera. 
So I, I love the look of that thing. But you're, you're right. I mean, it's just an A7 III sensor. There's nothing, there's nothing too crazy. And I don't think, I don't think it's going to surpass the A6500 in terms of videography capabilities. Like this camera here is the A6500 and I'm pretty happy with how that thing plays with the focus and everything else. Um, you were gonna pick one up, but you got the new new instead. The physics, you're gonna pick up a physics. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a good keyboard. Um, the new new also very good. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those selections there, Bueno. Good call. Good calls. Good calls all around. Yeah, I uh, I did not get a new new, but I have a I have a Rukia coming in. All right, so the build command is now updated. So yeah, let me go ahead. I've already partially unboxed this thing. Here are... Here's our case hardware. I think the Montage has an interesting mounting system. So this PCB has been desoldered once. And so we're gonna plug this thing up here to test it in just a moment. Uh, but this is the fave PCB here for the Montage. Um, Pretty standard, uh, pretty standard PCB here. Nothing much to it. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're good, right? Just setting there, and then here, ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure, is the keyboard we're working on tonight. So this is the Lin Montage. Oh, Pascals, thank you very much. A trained audio engineer in the house. That's what's up. Yeah, we uh, we get, it's so funny. So I got into keyboards about uh, five years ago now at this point, Pascals. And I've been, build, I've been building now for about 20 months. And it's just so funny to me how, like I was, I was like a weekender when it, at best, when it came to like, photography and now I'm like super into photography I'm getting more and more into videography I'm still not great at that and I'm super into audio of course um, but yeah thank you thank you Fescals. I appreciate that that's a great compliment coming from somebody who's in the field I am a total novice um, but uh, yeah I've 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 taken the route of just like throw money at the problem until it goes away and I think that's I think that's worked I guess <laughs> uh huh. Um, so yeah, here is here's the here's the build. Um, I'm 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 also excited. Artemy already knows this. I have got a set of uh, ZMF Aeolus coming. However, you pronounce that Aeolus, Aeolus, Aeolus. I think it's Aeolus. Um, but yeah, I've got a set of those ZMF cans on the way too. So I'm super excited for those to come as well. <laughs> yeah, spend your way out of most audio dilemmas. That's that's exactly right. And I, in fact, I don't have, I probably don't have the best microphone set up for uh, like YouTube in my office um, because my noise floor is generally pretty bad in this room, um, but it'll get better here soon. As soon as I'm able to, so there's actually a light box right there. And then there's a key light here. The key light is not that big of a deal, but the light box, and also my key light, I think is a little bit, I think it's a little bit dimmer than it normally is. Let me try, let me try turning this up a little bit. I think it's a little bit dimmer. Let's try turning that like that. Uh, yep, yeah, that was a little dim. That looks better. That's a little more evened out now. That's a little more evened out now. Um, but as soon as I get lighting actually installed in my office, does that look good? Did I just did I just overexpose myself now? I did a little bit. That's actually right. It's this guy. This guy's the problem. The light box is too high. My right side. There we go. That looks much better. 
right? That looks pretty good. Yeah, I bought the CMF Alice. This stream is a sign, feeble-minded. This stream is a warning. This stream is a warning that if you spend too long in hobbyist enthusiast hobbies like I have, you'll end up finding your way into like 10 of them and it's all over uh, from there. <laughs> um, uh, the IEMs that I'm using right now are a set of 64 audios. They're the uh, A12Ts. Yeah, and, and Hopi, I'm super stoked for the Alice. Um, however, however you spell this thing, I think it's a list like that. Yep. So that'll be, that'll be fun. They get here on Friday. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. This is the montage. So what I was getting at a minute ago too, and now I feel like my desk is a little dark. I don't have, my wife was recording some stuff. Yeah, I'm using an, an Addy 2 as well. So I've got the Addy 2 for here, and then I'm going to ultimately get a different amp DAC stack for my living room for actual like focused audiophile listening. But for my desk, the Addy 2 is great because it's very compact. Hold on one second, chat. Because our the desk the desk seemed to be a little bit um, underexposed there. I think I have my ISO hard set on this overhead camera, um, and I, so I wanted to get that back. I wanted to get that back to looking right to where it was, so that it wouldn't then also be okay. There we go. Okay, cool. Now I'm happy. Ryu Dragoon, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. I am all over the place. What's up, Ryu? How's it going, buddy? What's up, sexy? Um, okay, so let me... Let me show you guys what this thing actually looks like here. So the box that comes with the montage is quite nice. Lynn, Lynn puts a good amount of quality into that. Um, I'm getting I'm getting a Jaguar on Wednesday, and so I'm getting um, I'm getting one of the uh, uh, polycarbonate units. I'll let you guys know. I'll, I'll I'll show you the color of the unit that I'm getting when I actually when I get it. So no, no teasers on that until it gets here. But yeah, so here is, excuse the, the light fingerprints. Here is the montage. Now let's just see if those are fingerprints. I've got it under a, a much, I was looking the keyboard over. Um, so the client uh, that this is for has actually never seen this. Uh, the client purchased it and the seller shipped it to me and I will be shipping it from my office here to the to the buyer. And so it's in pretty it's in pretty good shape. The the anodization quality is pretty nice. Anytime you get black cases though, you get a little bit of like, you know, you'd normally never see this, but you see how the light hits it and it looks like there's like little like, you know, fingerprints or oil marks or something on the the aluminum music could get down by 20 percent okay I'll turn it down a little bit turn it down a couple decibels there there we go music is down all right so yeah, and then here, I don't know if you guys can see this. 
the montage comes with a little badge here. Let's see if I can get that to focus on it. Try focusing on my hand. There we go. Oh, it's not wanting to focus. There we go. There's the montage badge. And you see it's just like a little, it's like a little guy just right there in the top corner. And then it looks like the weight has been brushed and then blasted. So the weight is just a very simple brass that has a pretty nice, um, pretty nice finish to it, honestly. There's the finish on the brass weight. It does look like it's been either, it looks like to me that it's been sandblasted first and then brushed. So you have those nice uniform lines going right across the weight. So just a very thin, light sandblast it looks like. And then here's the side profile of it. Oh, and again. Excuse those fingerprints there. So you see these fingerprints, obviously, under my extremely harsh lighting here. You'd probably not even see these little fingerprints in daylight. You probably wouldn't even catch that in daylight. Now, if you guys can see this edge here, it's really pulling focus on my... On the, there we go. If you guys can see that edge there, look at how sharp that is. There's no chamfer edge or anything on that. Like that thing is a corner edge. Like that thing is sharp. It surprised me a little bit when I saw it. Yeah, so I, I it was, it was done on purpose. Um, so it was, it was a conscientious choice that Lynn made to do it like that. I just don't know if I like it personally. But it is, it is very beautiful. But for the aesthetic, that's right. So, anyways, with all that said, let's go ahead and test a PCB and start building. I'm gonna put this keyboard over here. Using a USB mini. We've got the 64 audio A12T right now, Ryu. These are a set of custom IEMs. They are they are the Max F, the Max F signature series. Hold on, that's not the, that's not the signature though. Here's the, here's the signature series. <laughs> the fave QM is, is not, it is not QMK, I do not believe. I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of like a, a little bit of a wacky um, firmware here. Uh, I believe it uses its own blend, uh, unless it has been unless it has been ported. Uh, I don't believe it has. But then again, uh, I'm not the first person who's worked on this PCB, so I'm not 100% certain. It, it is absolutely a downside, though. Uh, you will get no objections from me. This day and age, if it's not on QMK, and e more importantly on on via or via. Uh, that is that is a that is a, a missed ball if you ask me. They missed that one. Uh, very nice. Do you have an audiologist that you recommend near DC? Uh, I I had no issue with the one I went to. Um, I am a bit further out in Northern Virginia. I'm over in Gainesville, and so if you're if you're closer to that area. Um, then I can send you, I believe it was Mountain Mountain View 
Audiology is the name of the spot where I got fitted. It was very easy. Um, they uh, they took me they took me in even in the middle of Corona, um, so no worries there. Uh, they were very clean and prompt, and I was in and out for a very reasonable price too. I think it was like I think it was like thirty dollars, forty dollars, something like that. I thought the fitting would take would be a lot more expensive. I was nervous about that part. Please fast for yeah onto it. I absolutely will if I can. Um, do we have? Yeah, it was it was very it was very minimal for my impressions. Very minimal cost. Um, so chat, if you're unfamiliar with that process, I'm wearing a set of custom in ear monitors. Uh, and, and actually, you know what? I was cleaning up parts of my desk the other day and I came across my impression on um, one of them. I came across a failed impression. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. This is one of the impressions that failed. This was, this was not a good impression. But what they do is they take your ear and they inject it with this goop that then hardens. Then they take that thing out and basically, you know, like this is all like excess on top here. Like that's the outside of my ear. This is the inside of my ear canal here. They put this little Q-tip in there. It's like a Q-tip, but it's just on the this little band here. They missed something on this. Like this didn't go far enough into my ear. And so they had to retake this impression, but this gives you an idea. This is the inside of my ear. And basically uh, what they do is they send this impression over to uh, the uh, 64 audio in this case um, and they then uh, 3d scan this into their fancy computer system um, which then is able to print acrylic molds that match the exact inside of my ear and so then they take all the little drivers and load up all the little speaker drivers into this uh, IEM and close it up. And I, in this instance, I put my logos on it. Um, I could have chosen to do all sorts of things with, uh, with the design there. And I loved the logo that Dale made for me. And so I put, I put my logo on there and, uh, and away I went. And then about a month later, after 64 Audio received it, they finished engineering my custom set of IEMs and sent them back to me. That insert key I think is fine. We'll come back to the insert key here in a second. Pretty sure that's nothing to be concerned about. But yeah, for you, having the impressions done for like third, it was dirt cheap. The impressions were super, super cheap. I was expecting them to be somewhere in like the $200 range. I didn't do much investigation, but I assumed that, you know, our metropolitan area would have been on the more expensive side of what I had seen on the internet. And so when they said $30, I said immediately, when's, when's the next time I can come in? <laughs> immediately. Am I having issues with this PCB registering keys or is it just my tweezer method? Not really hitting everything. Let's see if I get everything on this row. I'll pay attention here. Yep, I got everything on that row. Okay. Any idea how much a sealed GMK Vaporway would run me? Um, I'm a $320. Oh my goodness. That's funny because I actually had somebody who was interested in my Vaporwave set and I was I was considering selling. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm going to or not. Hey Max, this is Tree Leaf. What's up, Tree Leaf? This is Max. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Deep Murky with the follow. Thank you very much.
If the audiologist makes the earpiece and gives you filters, that's where the cost comes in. Hmm, I can understand that. I can understand that, American Bear. Yeah. Yeah, so it was just a it was a completely foreign process for me when I went through it. Um, I did not know what to expect when I walked in there. I had watched like a video on how they fill your ear up and I was really ready to have like the oh shit it feels like there's water going into my ear effect and it really wasn't it wasn't that bad. I was ready for it to feel awful. And I really, I really was not too, I was not too uh, displeased. All right, so let me, let me, hold on, let's reset this. Let's clear this and check out insert and that control key. And then the control key. Yeah, I think I just missed those earlier. Stuttered or something. I think the PCB is good. Um, so yeah, we're, we're okay here. I'll put this aside for now. Arson, I am doing, I'm doing well, my dude. I'm doing well. I, uh, I've got some goodies for you coming up here in the next week or so. I know you're away. I think you're still probably walking the dog. I'm not sure if you're back yet. Yeah, so it was, it was very easy, American Bear. Yeah, that's cool. Fittings and filters and multiple DBs run about 150 to 200, but everyone who goes see loud music show should get them. Yeah, so like when you, so that's just the, that's just the, so there's no, there's no drivers or anything in that. That's pretty much just like the mold, right? I'm curious, could I wear these to a rock show? and have essentially the same effect, them not plugged into anything. Ah, oh, interesting. Pascal says yes. What's up, someone? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, no, you're, uh, you're just in time. Right, exactly. I, I mean, I'm assuming they were just custom, right, custom fitting earplugs. Yeah, so, um, okay. So, and oh, by the way, here are the switches we're working on tonight, if you guys are curious about those. Uh, this is for a client, Dodo. Yeah, you got it. So, nothing really to it. You guys have seen an MX Black Switch before. It looks like we've got a clear TX spring on it. Um, and, uh, and here are... Here are the sounds of this guy. Yeah, I see, um, I see drummers using them a lot, a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not that musically gifted, but I love listening to music. And so I'm always, I'm always like paying attention to that sort of thing. And, and when I first saw CIMs, I was like, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I had it on my bucket list to try some for the longest time. And I knew I didn't want to get like a cheap pair. I knew I wanted to actually, like if I was going to invest in the time it took to actually get something, I wanted to get something nice. And so it took me a while, like, I mean, I first saw and learned about CIMs probably in like the middle to early 2000s. Um, and so, so here's the fun part. I actually reached out to 64 Audio and, and I had no expectation of this, but I said, hey, here's my socials. Are you guys interested in, you know, helping me out with a pair of these? And that's what really jumped it forward. So I reached out to 64 Audio and they got back to me pretty much immediately and said, hey, we actually sponsor Twitch streamers, you know, all the time. So these were not free. I spent my own money on them. I got a good amount. I got a good, I got a good discount though. And the discount, plus when I called the audiologist and found out that those were only $30, I was like, oh, that's an easy, that's an easy clap. 
Let's go for it. Leva, what's going on? Good to see you in chat. So, yeah, but anyways, um, let's go ahead and start stabilizer tuning. As I mentioned, we've got some C3 stabilizers for tonight. These things all come, these like kits, they all come in these like individually wrapped plastic bags. It seems to me like it's a little bit of a waste in terms of packaging. But the C3 stabilizers are pretty good. All right, so the, the only problem is, <laughs> someone I noticed this earlier, you sent me a you sent me a 6.25 wire, <laughs> which is fine. I've got plenty of 7U wires, but you owe me a you owe me a 7U for next time. <laughs> Cuz yeah, this is a 6. Point, yeah, that's a 6.25. <laughs> Yeffy, what's up? Ooh, look at Yeffy's special sub badge. There we go. I need uh, I need Jax to come up in here because Jax has got the Jax has got the uh, the full kit and caboodle. Jax has got all three. Jax has got all three colors. I think he's got the yellow, red, and blue. Yeah, so uh, you know you know who made these. Yeffy. We got Dale we got Dale Snail working on graphics for us. Which I am so stoked. He is so he is such a busy guy. I am so stoked that I was able to sneak that in and work with Dale. He's such an awesome guy. Super excited. I don't if you guys have not already checked out the projects that he's got cooking. Um, I will be sharing a good portion of them with you guys. Um, I, I'm not sure to what extent I can share where we're at with things right now, um, but I know I've got an early version of the Oxblood switch headed my way. It will not be it will not be color graded for the final production run, but it'll be an early it'll be an early manufacturer run and a test for us with this manufacturer and uh, and and all of the inner components that we'll be using with it. Yep, yep, so I've got Oxbloods that'll be coming soon. They'll be all black. It'll be an all black, black on black on black for the top, bottom, and stem. What I would like to hear is your opinion on the TKL. What separates this from all the others? Why should I buy this over others? Uh, TKLs have uh, a pretty good sound signature overall. I don't know if it's there's more space for reverberation to spread in the keyboard, um, but when I, for me, a keyboard is very important on a feel level, but also on an acoustic and sound level. Uh, for me, it's got to hit both of those notes. It's got to feel great and it's got to sound great and aesthetically pleasing and the looks of it is a pretty easy thing to capture. I think a lot of boards look good, but I think a lot of boards don't sound good. Um, switches are able to make things feel a lot better, but a keyboard is able to make edits to that as well. Um, and so the TKL is just kind of, it's a standard rectangle that people make slight, slight dev deviations on, you know, side profiles and, using different mounting systems and plate systems, but for the most part, it's a rectangle. And, you know, that form factor has remained because it's kind of tried and tested and, and it works. So, with that, you know, I think it's just kind of one of those things that people, people like that sort of classic look to it too. Um, but, uh, Ah, the retooled blacks. Excuse me. Okay, I'll need to update that. But uh, but yeah, and I think I think also um, it just kind of it's just a nice form factor. You've got that. I mean, for me personally, you've got that classic keyboard look with having something a little bit different. You know. It's one of those things, it's the same kind of deal for me as like vintage keycaps. At first glance, a set of vintage keycaps looks 
the same as anything else. Oh, hey, what's up, Arson, by the way? Um, you had said something, and then you had to go run enough and walk the dog, and I, I, I responded to it, but you weren't here, and I can't remember what it was now. Um, are you talking about Are you talking about the keyboard cable? Or are you talking about my IEM cable? <clears throat> and hello, what's up to you, buddy? Yeah, vaporwave market price. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think I think Chad answered that. Yeah, I think three hundred ish or so is about right. Um, but. Uh, but, but yeah, anyways, I hope that answers your question on the TKO there, Ryu. Um, oh, I, I was mid-thought and I didn't finish it. So I, I, like, I, like the, uh, I like the aesthetic of vintage caps and here's why. At first glance, someone is gonna see them and say, okay, just a normal set of keycaps. But then when you look a little bit closer, you're like, oh, there's nuanced detail in this design of these keycaps, you know, whether it's some sub legends or some, you know, crazy, you know, characters or fonts somewhere, right? I mean that, you know, as you look a little bit closer, it's like, oh, this is actually really intricate and nice. And I like that subtle, I like that subtle yet, you know, very distinguished feel and look. I'm a little bit, I feel a little bit dyslexic talking about it, but I hope that sort of captures what, you know, the essence of what I'm trying to say. Does it make sense? Uh, so I think that's, and also, and also hype. TKLs are just, you know, all very expensive and hyped up boards. They just happen to be, right? Like the form factor's not hyped. As I mentioned, it's just a, it's just a rectangle, you know? All right, uh, I need one, two, three, four of these. So we've got one extra. Okay, I've got a bunch of trash now. Thank you very much for the follow, Espada. Yeah, the audio cable is just a... Uh, it's just a silver, it's a silver plated, but copper cable. It's just a, it's just a pretty basic two pin IEM cable. Um, I actually have a different one coming from Forza uh, for my IEMs, Dale. Um, I have a crazy cable coming for my, you guys wanna see the cable I've got coming for the, let me see if I can find it, hold on. I, I've got a crazy cable coming for the ALS. Let me load this thing up. Take a look at this cable. I am so hyped for this. So I've got I've got a cable. I've got one of those coming for my ALIS. Ultimately, it's probably going to take about a month or so to get it, but that's what that's what's on the way for ALIS. I recommend this pick for what form factor to pick. Let's take a look here. Oh boy, I can't I can't zoom in because I don't have a keyboard plugged in right now. But I'm assuming this is a good flow chart. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Uh, actually, you know what? I can zoom in. I have to do it manually though. Watch this. You guys are watching a keyboard content creator, and the guy doesn't have a keyboard plugged in. Why is the resolution a little low on it? I can't read what it says. Is there a is there a high res version that I'm missing here? Home bit image and new tab. No, it's the same thing. But yeah, so the Lima cable um, arson is uh, made by uh, our resident uh, cable maker, Suichiro. It's S U I C H I R O uh, hashtag zero zero one on Discord. And uh, if, if you're here, yeah, if you know how to spell it. You can spell it for me, help me out, since I don't have a keyboard plugged in. Um, and uh, we can send we can send more people to Suishiro. Suishiro is a good guy. He makes good good high quality cables. This is the uh, this is the black paracord with a carbon tech flex. And, uh, and the fake Limo connector, because real Limo is total meme. Please do not spend $80 on real Limo. 
that would be a huge fail. Do not spend real money, I repeat, on this connector. The real Limo connectors are military grade connectors suitable for you exploding, going underwater with, like, I don't know about you guys, that's not that's not my game plan with any of my keyboards. <laughs> and so, yeah, please don't buy real Limo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where can I find info about Lin keyboards? Uh, on Geek Hack. You can find it on Geek Hack. Lin keyboards is a, a Korean keyboard maker. Um, oh, and you know what I wanted to do? No, you know what? I don't want to do applicators tonight. Those are just for switches. I got a whole bunch of these per Simon's recommendation um, for, for tuning switches. Um, and so these look like they'd actually work really well. These are, these are makeup applicators uh, that I'm going to use to tune switches uh, in the future. And so I'm, I'm curious to try this. I don't think this will work well for stabilizers though. I am working on sort of like a general JWK linear build uh, or a linear review um, uh, to answer that question, uh, Res. Um, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to release that here soon-ish. I have some more footage to take and some more B-roll to do, but I'm going to be doing some info here on the Sohos. <laughs> proceeds to raid Bree's closet for makeup applicators. Nice, Yuffie. Yeah, <laughs> but for, for tuning switches, my paintbrush is too high of quality. And so and so it's actually better to have the worst garbage paintbrushes you can get. Um, and so yeah, so that's that's kind of where that whole thing comes in. Um Well, so TKLs are, I think what kind of, I think what a lot of designers focus on with a TKL is going like the nicest they can. Like not saying that like designers put out, you know, form factors that are of lesser quality, but let me think of it. Okay, so here's an example. Take the Polaris, for example. Um, now, AIO3 has not, to the extent of my knowledge, has not done a TKL yet. But AIO3 took the 60% form factor and said, hey, let me make something that's, that's nice, but that's economical. And so he took his Polaris keyboard and, you know, uh, it was sold as a $280 group by board, you know, kind of appealing more to like the mid range, not the end game collector. TKLs, I feel like designers focus on those towards more of the end game collector. And so I think on average, you find more TKLs that are expensive than other form factors as well. And so I, I think for you, I think that kind of like, I think that kind of like should answer the question a little bit. Um, and, and anything that's like nice, high-end enthusiast quality, people get hyped about. Um, but there are a good amount of TKLs that are not super hyped that you might you know be able to score and find that are super super good like the tkl form factor does have you know advantages in my opinion to other form factors one just preference right i like tkls but also like you can find and i don't know if this is the case anymore but maybe you can find like an lz cls or like a mech 27 or maybe like a, the mira the korean mira group by um, you can find some of those TKLs for, for less money than, you know, what you see like TGR and, and Key Colt and all of those guys running, you know, the time TKL. Like, I mean, the time TKL is the perfect example. That's like, you know, what can I make, you know, how, how expensive can I make this thing? How intricate and designer, you know, enthusiast grade can I make it? And I feel like that's where, you know, a lot of people's heads are when it comes to TKL. Uh, and BBQ, and I mean, I think that answers your question too. My favorite layout's TKL. Um, uh, I feel like everyone who bought the Kiwis just selling them as soon as they get them are people disliking them. 
I like the Kiwi switches a lot. Um, I uh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe people maybe people bought them with just the intent to flip them. There's a lot of people like that in the hobby right now, Arson. I'm not sure. But uh, but if a heavy tactile is your thing, there's uh, there's nothing wrong with the Kiwi. I did a full review on that switch. It's very smooth, has a good sound. It benefits from a film, and it also benefits from a spring swap, uh, in my opinion, because 67 gram is a little heavy for me. Your mileage may vary, of course. Andromeda baby coming soon. AO3 making the TK, yeah, the Andromeda. Yeah, I think I've seen, I think I've seen pictures of that thing, uh, review. Yeah, so, yeah, pricing for TKL seems to be going up uh, uh, by, you know, by default standards, right? I mean, you used to be able to get like a TKL in like the three, high threes to like four mid to low fours. Um, I'm not sure. I'm curious to see what Jaguar releases at. I'll be really curious to see what pricing that thing comes out at. I know what I spent for my Jaguar. I'm not sure what the group buy price will be though. And I was talking to Elaine uh, earlier today um, and at the tail end of our conversation, I asked her what info she wanted me to share on Jaguar and she didn't uh, She didn't reply back to me yet. And so I don't, I don't know what info is official yet for group buy pricing or anything like that. And I don't know what she wants me to share if she has timelines for it or anything else. Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a TGR uh, Jane V2CE on the way. Um, yeah, the Mech 27 was great, their review. Mech 27 was a really solid board. Um, I like it a lot more uh, if you could take out, like the V2 was even better because you didn't have to have that LED diffuser in between the two layers on the Mech 27, which was great. Uh, what did I need here? I need one, two, three, four, and then yes, yeah, so I have enough. I have enough stabilizer housings here. I have the perfect number. Sixty fives are good too. Yeah, sixty five percent are great. I think a lot of people are friendly with sixty fives because they don't drop. It gives you a smaller form factor without dropping the arrows. I think a lot of people get nervous about dropping the arrow cluster. Arson, I think you will like them. Milk has tuned up so many tangies for me right now that he has got that process down pat. I'm actually going to be uploading the video of the Matrix 1.2 OG that I built up with tangies for, uh, for Rich tomorrow. And so stay tuned for that. I've got, I've got the Matrix 1.2, I've got the Able X, and I've got the elephant to take pictures of and upload onto YouTube tomorrow. So I've got a busy couple of days here. And then we've got a keyboard build on Thursday as well. I believe we are building a KBD 75 on Thursday. And then I think I'm building a little something, something for you on, uh, on Tuesday, Arson. Although, it is going to have to be pushed back because I think I'm going to be traveling for client site on Tuesday. So I think we'll be doing your build on Thursday of next week, Arson. Yeah, Milk is a great guy. Um, Milk is going to be doing uh, hopefully some more build stuff here too uh, in the near future. Now we need to see a rebuild of my 1.2. Yeah, uh, that's that's definitely on the list. Uh, I don't like how my V1 got inks feel, and so I'll be doing that. Uh, uh, Fascal, is that it? Might be it. Might be your KBD seventy five um, that was dropped off to me um, last week in person. Does that sound right? I know it wasn't you who dropped it off. Uh, yeah, BBQ and I think uh, I think the Iron 180. Uh, good luck. Um, that's a very hype board. Um, 
if you can if you can get lucky enough to win one go for it if you can't uh, I would avoid it I avoid all thing yeah you know, I would avoid all things that are super super hype right now and that board is gonna be super hype no oh, don't don't sweat it arson it gives me an excuse to show off my case people love seeing uh, people love seeing my 910. Yep, exactly, Fiscals. Yep, you got it. So, I have a question. Did you go to school for audio engineering? Or is that something that just over time you picked up and then started working uh, professionally in that field? Because audio engineering is so interesting to me. And I interesting interestingly enough, I feel like I feel like the keyboard hobby is such an interesting audio engineering dilemma. When I first got into doing all these typing sounds tests, I had such difficulty making everything sound nice and you know getting my room proofed and and I still don't. But man, like it just, there's so, like with something you're recording that's such a low decibel to begin with, pumping up the, you know, pumping up the volume, the gain to get it to sound nicely audible and the keyword being nicely audible is so tough. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, if you don't have a really, really nice noise floor where that is your ambient noise in your room is at a very low decibel. We're talking like if your ambient noise in your room is not at like, normally like negative 50 or better a keyboard typing sounds test to you to turn the gain up you either going to have to treat it with some you know denoise effect which will color the sound of the keyboard negatively mind you or you have to just throw a bunch of money at it to get <laughs> to get better sounding equipment that does better with a, a shitty noise floor and treating your room. It's just, it's just so much of a mess. Why is the 910 and Jane so hyped? Um, yeah, I think people just really like TGR's designs. I think they really like his designs. And what's funny, like 910 objectively does not sound good. There are, there are 910s. I have like getting a 910 to sound good is like bottling lightning. And I have gotten a couple of 910s to sound really good. I do not think my 910 SE sounds good right now. Like the space bar is just rough. And so it's kind of funny, right? I mean, something that's so hyped, but you know, objectively not that great. Like the Polaris is a better sounding keyboard than my 910 right now. Maybe I can fix it, but you have to work at it. Like that's the thing. Like the Polaris, I didn't have to work at that keyboard to make it sound good. It's just it's designed well and it sounds good. My 910, like in Sam's, Sam's had tons of you know lessons learned, you know, as he's gone through keyboard engineering, right? Sam is the designer of TGR, and I love all of Sam's work, and I love my 910. Don't get me wrong, but. You have to work at it to make it sound good. And if you have to work at something to make it sound good, something that's meant to be, you know, it's meant to be graded on three levels. The aesthetic, which check, the 910 has got that, for me personally. Aesthetic is a lot, all of these things are preference. The feel, which is okay. The 910 does not feel as good as some other boards too. The feel could be better and the sound. Those are the three things, like those are the three things we grade keyboards on from a criteria purpose, right? I mean, it's it's the acoustics, it's the feel, and it's the look. And, and if you nail all three of those components, you end up with a really great keyboard. And if there's things that are lacking, you know, we as keyboard builders, we work on it, we work on it, we work on it, we like do modifications, we try and, you know, use different technologies, different plate materials, all sorts of different, you know, things to compensate for what might not have been perfect right off the bat. But it's hype to answer your question overall. 
why is the 910 and the Jane so so sought after? A lot of it is hype. But the V2C, the V2CE sounds amazing, and the V2 sounds really good. Um, I'm not I'm not partial to brass, and so I don't like brass builds as much. Um, but uh, but the polycarbonate builds that I had done on my V2 Jane both sounded and felt fantastic. Lots of flex, just a really nice experience overall. And the V2CE though is just an improvement even more so on top of that. So and QC, yeah, with TGR you pay you pay for a lot of QC. So like I'm, for example, I'm still waiting on my Jane V2 CEs. Um, and I was talking to Sam the other week. Um, he didn't like the way the way the latest round came out of anodization. And so he sent all of them back. Now I don't know what all of them back means, but I'm assuming it was a lot of them. And he just, you know, he will fight the fight with the manufacturer and he will make sure that everything goes through per his spec. And so from an anodization quality, I mean, yeah, at this point, TGR is one of the nicest in the game. Sam also likes trying new places. So Sam is using a new manufacturer for the Jane V2 CE than he used in uh, the Jane V2 days. And so, yes, Sam is Yuxi. Sam and Yuxi are the same. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, the, uh, yeah, so, you know, there's benefits, right, to trying out new manufacturers and, you know, exploring. And Sam likes to explore. Sam likes to try out new factories. He likes to try out new, you know, manufacturing chains. And, you know, he gets a lot of benefit from that. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, he also, you know, I'm sure gives himself, he, he injects a couple of headaches into his workflow process because he's trying new people as well at the same time. Like there are some designers that like find a manufacturer and like once they've like locked in that chain, they're like, yep, this is it, perfect. And they get that working relationship with them. Sam likes to spread the love a little bit. Do you feel like the community has become oversaturated? Man, we're getting good questions in chat tonight. Um, and I missed it for a second there too, Fescals. Um, uh, so you're a computer engineer, you've minored as an audio engineer. Nice. I uh, work semi-professional mixing and mastering engineer. I record and produce hip hop and rock as well. Nice. Most of my day job work is AI, ML, and cybersecurity. Ah, oh, nice. AI and machine learning. Very cool. I work almost entirely in treated rooms. And yeah, they are a lot of work to get right. One of the reasons I wanted silent inks on my build was to keep them quiet for the studio use. That's cool, man. Nice. Yeah, I could never, I could never do silent builds, but man, nice. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, and, and audio treated rooms. So like, the question I have is, how do I get my small like? So okay, you walk in my front door, you make a right, and you see my office. How do I get my office sounding great without having a ton of panels on my walls and I'm, when I say panels I mean like those like a crate like shitty looking panels and so what I'm looking into is the potential idea of like maybe framing uh, some portions of my wall and then uh, like coating uh, coating like plywood boards with some nice soft padded material to absorb some sound I'm thinking, I'm running through some ideas like that in my head. Um, I'm also thinking about, you know, maybe just like filling my room up with artwork and doing other like things in the room to treat it a little bit better. But I, I mean, I have, I have a room that is like, I mean, you see the door, it's a glass door. There's no like, there's no like closed bedroom or anything for me. This needs to, this space needs to be practical for what I use it for, but almost more importantly for me and definitely more importantly for my wife 
and and happy wife happy life um is me keeping this room aesthetically pleasing as well and so yeah yeah um that's uh that's kind of like the dilemma i find myself in with with my room um <laughs> Yeah, Raz, I remember that 910 stream where we had to tune stabilizers forever. That was that was a rough one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to stay up with chat, guys. I know I'm I'm trying I try to read everything and uh, and so I know I'm I know I'm falling behind a bit. <laughs> My apologies, guys. Um, okay, so so Ryu, now to get to your question, the oversaturated market. Um, has market become oversaturated though? I feel like there's quite a lot of demand for all products. Do you mean market demand is oversaturated? Let me read the full breadth of your question. Do you feel like the community has become oversaturated? Do you feel like the hobby has become much more transactional than an actual community? Um, okay, yeah, you are saying that the hobby in terms of population has become oversaturated. Yeah, that's that's what I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, I, you know, so my take on that question, um, you know, I think, I think more people coming into the hobby is a good thing overall. Um, but, you know, yeah, there are definitely, there are definitely disadvantages to, you know, getting into something late. You know, I, you know, I am, you know, hashtag blessed because I know a lot of, you know, the designers and a lot of the people at this point, like in my cycle in the keyboarding hobby that make, that make my life in keyboards a lot easier. Whereas somebody new does not have that benefit. And so a lot of people get frustrated and then start designing their own thing. So that's good. Like that, you know, oversaturation and market, you know, brings a lot of people in. And then there are a certain number of people that say, man, this is cool. I can do this better. That's a great thing. But market oversaturation with the terms of people also brings with it, you know, a whole supply and demand issue and just a whole bunch of, you know, uh, issues with, you know, new people getting, getting supply. Um, and, and so that can be tough and it can make, it can make a hobby really hard to break into. I think already right out the gate. So if we were to compare a hobby to some things, we can compare it to audio file equipment which I think already we do a better job than the audiophile community in being welcoming to newcomers. And then sneakers. Sneakers is a difficult one because I think sneaker community maybe does a little bit better of a job than us. Um, but I'd say I'd argue that there is a lot less of a sneaker community. There's a lot less of a feeling like you're not going, at least I'm not going to sneaker meetups. You know what I mean? Like, and I love, I love shoes. Um, but, uh, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think, I think that, I think that new people coming into the hobby overall is good, but I think there's going to be a couple of years between where we are now and where we need to get to where vendors can actually keep up with demand of the market. Um, so that's a great question. I mean, it's it's a difficult one to, to answer, but I'm pretty happy with how I answered it. I think that was good. I think that was good. Uh, did the first V2 CDs ship like a year ago? Uh, they shipped a while ago. I don't know if it was a year, but I still don't have mine. So remember when I was just talking about how I have like ins with a lot of designers in the community? Like, I mean, you know, even I get slowed down with things, right? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have my V2 yet. <laughs> uh... So, uh, and so, yeah, I've, I've considered getting a consultation, um, and you, if you have somebody in the DC area that you like, um, that does like home calls, 
I would absolutely be willing to investigate into that. Uh, it might time up perfectly too because I have an electrician coming into the house in a couple of weeks uh, to quote me out on a whole bunch of work that I need to get done in the house as well for, for electrical running. And I'm basically what I'm gonna do in here, I have a huge light box here. I wanna get rid of that. I wanna do recess lighting and track lighting up on the ceiling here, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff all throughout the house. And so, yeah, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get all that done. And if, if I can knock two birds out with one stone, where I'm like doing a whole bunch of lighting work, and I could also do like some, you know, do it yourself, or maybe some, you know, uh, maybe some modifications and sound treatments that are aesthetic as well in the room. I think that'd be great. All right, what's this link here uh, that Pascal sent? Oh yeah, those panels. Yeah, see, something like that does look a lot better. Looks a whole hell of a lot better. Yeah, I can, I can potentially, you know, justify something like that. That you know, if I do, if I do a couple of different mods to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, chat is popping off today, Raz. We got a lot of people asking good questions and stuff. If the population is oversaturated, then there's not enough releases. Um, yeah, so Raz, I mean, if population is oversaturated, there are more and more releases. So when I first got into the hobby, there was like, you know, two group buys a year. Now there's, there's 10 group buys a month. And if there's only 10, that's a light month. Um, so there's more and more things going on, but the just numbers of that, you know, it's people can't keep up with the demand. So things, that's why we see things just like every group buy sells out in two minutes. Yeah, it's just growing pains. Yeah, you, you guys, you guys have it. Bear with it. If you're new to the hobby, bear with it and be patient. That's the best thing I can recommend. Bear with it and be patient because, you know, people ask like, I mean, what's, the, what's this worth? What's this, what's this, you know, keyboard that I'm thinking about buying worth? It's worth whatever the designer originally priced it at. Um, keyboard flipping used to be whatever group buy price was plus $250. And man, are we shifted away from that? Like, <laughs> that is, it is so far away from group buy plus 250. It's not even funny. It's like group buy plus another group buy. Like, and, and that's for like something that's not even as hyped. Like some stuff is like, four times the cost of what it was originally. It's just crazy. So, um, so yeah, and then uh, what else have we got here? We're doing a uh, quick mod on this switch. We're gonna make this switch right here a space bar chat. So I've got my strings. Somewhere here. Where am I? There's my ninety. So Dodo, if you're interested in generating excitement for your keyboard, um, if your design is good, um, then uh, if you feel it's good, if you feel it's ready, uh, chat it up, chat it up with, you know, your network of, of friends or, or us, you know chat it up just casually you know you should in my opinion if you're like designing a keyboard you should you should gauge you know interest in it from your peers uh first and and if you know by all means if you want to if you want to share you know it with you know friends start there and say hey you know and you'll get you'll get you'll get interesting feedback you know people will people will come to you and say hey you know i love this but why did you do this this and this and, and so just be ready for criticism 
hopefully constructive like that. If you're, you know, polling your friends, that's what you should receive, Dodo. Um, and uh, and then, uh, but yeah, I mean, from there, you know, I think generating excitement can happen if you've got a really good design, it can happen organically or you can promote it a little bit. Um, I think it should be a combination. I think you need to have first and foremost, the right, you know, the right design, the right product. And if you've got that, I think organically people will start to like, you know, from just you talking to your friends, once you say, oh yeah, you guys can share this with other people, they'll, they'll then, you know, share it and just, you know, things spread like wildfire here in the hobby. I mean, people start designing something and they get input from a couple of friends and then next thing you know, you know, half the community knows about it. And and all they've done is like for the Oxbloods, all Dale has done is posted a couple things on Instagram. But everyone knows about Oxbloods and he's only posted like three things. So Yeah, I'd say I'd say be I'd say be casual with it if you're just getting into the designing and and sort of, you know, sort of spread your wings a little bit first and uh and see and see what you like and what you don't like and and bring that into your designs obviously that's what your goal is going to be i would assume at first um and then and then see what other people think you know it should be something you like first though and if other people like it great and if not well then you've prototyped something that you really like and screw what everyone else thinks <laughs> Striker was posted the other day for five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, please, please don't pay. Like, all right, three hundred for a GMK set is already insane. I will not pay three hundred dollars for a GMK set. I'm sorry. Like, unless it, I, it can be something I love, but I will not. I will not pay that much for it at that price. I just can't do it. Um, Striker, the Tifu, the Tifu set. <laughs> It'll make me a better gamer. <laughs> oh, so you sent me a couple consultation requests. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, awesome. I will I will add those to my website here that I'm watching throughout the stream. And I will reach out to them for you in just a little bit. So you highly recommend Gramophone. Awesome. Okay, cool. OT bo OTD boards probably cost $200 originally. <laughs> yeah, OTD boards were uh, very cheap. Uh, originally, I think I think first OTD boards were like uh, like you know maybe with shipping and everything would probably be like low three hundreds. Yeah, now OTD is like four grand. <laughs> if I get creams and striker, I'll be as good as Tifu. That's absolutely right. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and also Dodo too. Yeah, that's what some people do. Like someone other than you says, uh, you know, private group I went. I feel like designers will either like, you know, prototype something and maybe do like a couple units, maybe one for themselves and one for like a friend or two. Um, Cause you generally with a manufacturer, you would only, the, the lowest number you would run would be two. Cause you would want to make sure you'd have an extra for uh, in case the first one got messed up. Um, and probably three. Uh, and so, uh, but yeah, people, people do private group buys a lot too, cause that takes so much stress off you. So for like a lot of first time designers, they'll just do a small run of keyboards for like, you know, 10 of their friends. Um, and that, and that generates a ton of hype. I mean, you remember the, you remember the gasket zero, zero, 15, $15,000 meme. <laughs> uh huh. That's right, that's right, Raz. Um, and that I think brings it back to like the whole community elements um, that we've got going on in this hobby. Like I feel like, I feel like there's so much more community interaction still with keyboards even today than there is with, you know, any other hobby. Um, 
And so while I think it's shifted and changed, it's definitely different than when I first got into it. I think there is still a pretty good sense of community in this. And then I, I think I think once coronavirus is done too and meetups start picking up again, uh, you guys who might be newer to the to the to the keyboard hobby, you'll start to see that as well. That's always one of the first things I recommend. I'm not recommending it now, obviously because of the climate we're in, but. Yeah, I always say to like new people in the hobby, you know, who ask me like, how can I break into this? What's the ease? Go to a meetup. Because at a meetup, you can meet so many cool people that are into it. And you can really get an idea for a whole, like, I mean, you can get a switch tester with a million different switches. And it can take you forever to accumulate everything that you would see in a single afternoon at a meetup. And not only can you get a feel for all those switches that you might be curious about, but you can find them on a top mount board, on a gasket mount board, on a tray mount board, on a on a gummy mount. Like, I mean, just, you can find so many cool things at, at meetups. And then also, you know, just cool projects. Might get, you know, your creative juices flowing. You see somebody who's done something cool with a keyboard that you never even thought about. There's so many people, even especially in the DC area, I feel like there's so many people that are into keyboards that you never see post on Reddit. You never see really active in Discord. But you know, when I when I see them in person, I'm like, oh, dude, what's up? You know, like people with huge flex collections too. I've met so many great people at meetups. Nathan's dad is here. Dr. Uru. What's up? I am I am very well. How are you this evening? Thank you for tuning in. That was one of the only funny things I think DQ has ever said. <laughs> that was so funny. Chad, if you don't know, uh, both Bueno Builds and Dr. Uru are also keyboard content creators. Always good to see fellow builders up in chat. And absolutely, review. It goes without saying that they're great people. There's no one other than great people hanging out in my chat. <laughs> oh, I know, right? I, uh, I have just been in and out of conference calls all day since Monday morning at like 8 a.m. It has been quite a busy week. All right, so let's not lose this guy because all the other switches look identical. So what we're gonna do is first and foremost, we are going to, I'm not gonna put the lube away yet because we might still need it. Where did my, where did those little bags of Ziplocs go? Here they are. Here they are, here they are. looking for here we are this would be a good one no reason to slip this guy into it keep this extra stabilizer and the hardware to go with it as well as your one stock spring from the space bar <laughs> we'll put that all aside That'll all be going back to the owner of this board. Slicing and dicing up mice for science. Yikes. All right. Oh, that's garbage too. All right, so let's go ahead and at this point now, Get our plates. All right, 
give me one second. Two. I want to get this. All right, let's get, what have we got here? We've got Hex, Hex hardware tonight. Yeah, that time, that, or, or that iron, that iron TKL, oof, man. May God have mercy on your soul if you're not able to win that and if you're going for that in aftermarkets because that guy is going to be, I bet you that thing will break 3K instantly. Yeah, most sports are definitely hex. Yeah. Most keyboard designers are using hex screws. Definitely the way to go if you ask me. See if this is deep enough. I guess it is. And the ones that are really uh, doing it right are using uh, are using a magnetic hex. That's the way. Definitely for you, but uh, but yeah, and I think I think it can be I think it can be safely summed up. So uh, the iron the iron one sixty five did not hit all prerequisites as needed. So if you remember, our prerequisites are three things, three categories that we look at for good keyboards: the feel, the sound, and the aesthetic. The iron one sixty five definitely hit on the aesthetic. The sound is not there. I had to modify the Iron 165 that I built with a whole lot of liner to make it passable for sound. And the feel, the feel is up for debate. I've only tried the Iron 165 with a copper plate and that was very stiff, which is not my cup of tea. Now, it you know uh, could be better with a different plate, you know, um, and so, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, my, my rec, you know, my experience with it as well, Raz, was that it was stiff. It was stiff for me too. Okay. So here's our plate. Let's just take a quick inventory here of the inside of our case. Not that this really matters too, too much, but I always just like to, to give this a once over for clients as well. You have a little bit of marks and, uh, and, and machining marks in, uh, in the inside of this, uh, but we are talking about, you know, the inside of this seam here where it's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. Um, and, and even those are far and few in between. Most of this stuff I'm looking at is just coming right off. And so it's really just this inside part right right here. Can you guys see that? You see that right there? Looks like it's just like a little bit of marking, but I mean, again, that doesn't really matter. Like some, some little guys right here, that might come off with a microfiber too. But again, you know what I mean? That doesn't really, like that guy just came right off. This stuff might come off too with a microfiber, but it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, the important part is this. This part looks good. So what's stopping people from replicating these hyped boards and just removing the branding? Um, so, well, there's a couple of different types of hyped boards. There's boards like the Iron 165 that are just the aesthetic, I think, that, you know, uh, that is that is plays the biggest part in the Iron 165's case. Um, now, the other uh, types of boards that get a whole lot of hype are boards like uh, the uh, gasket, right? I mean, there's an example of a board that 
uh, you know, doesn't have much to it, right? I mean, it's just a it's just a rectangle of aluminum, uh, but it feels so nice. The designer on the gasket focused clearly on the sound and feel signature of the keyboard, and the aesthetic of it is very simplistic and clean, and I want to say utilitarian, but that's not really a good word for it. It's just. It's a rectangle. He didn't try and make it anything other than just a rectangle. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, for my purposes, I kind of, you know, I like, I like that. Um, you know, focusing more on the feel and the sound, and having just a simple, very clean line is, is, you know, a great way to go. It's great when things look good, but they need to sound and feel good too. For me, I would rate things... I would rate things both feel and sound pretty close to the same. Oh, Yeffy, thank you very much, man. Yeffy is gifted 32 subs. Thank you very much, Yeffy. Dude, that's a pog in chat right there. What keyboard checks the three off the list? Um, for sound, feel, and aesthetic. Um, right now, honestly, you know what's been checking all three off my list? The LZ Physics over there has been doing a great job of that. I like the profile, I like the aesthetic of it. Um, I like the feel of the, uh, of the carbon fiber and uh, the switches are great. Now switches obviously you know, make a big component of it. I, I don't know if necessarily the keyboard there is doing anything to help with the feel. Um, the Matrix 1.2 struck gold. I think the Matrix 1.2 is one of the nicest and best feeling and best sounding keyboards. Um, what keyboard checks the sound and feel and typing except the look? Uh, I mean, it could be argued that the gasket does not check the look. There's nothing special about it. There's no, there's no flair. There's no accents. There's no, it's just a anodized rectangle of aluminum and you either like that or you don't. Um, there's nothing else on it. So, I mean, it's subjective, very much so there. Um, what keyboard checks the, let me think of a good one. Let me think of a good one that really hits on, <laughs> really hits on like the feel and sound, but not the aesthetic. Um, hmm. Gasket tofu. <laughs> oh man. Well, and so let me back up too. Like, I like the look of the gasket. I mean, a simple design like that. What's stopping these manufacturers from mass producing boards from group buys? Um, so I don't know how the designer and the manufacturer takes, uh, I don't think any designer has signed over ownership rights to a manufacturer to say, you can run this in mass production at the post end of the sale. I think every designer has sort of collectively entered into the unspoken bargaining agreement of I'll produce a buy of 50 units and I won't exceed that because as a designer, I also deep down, you know, some designers are like, oh, I'd love to just provide something for everyone. The only one I've seen who's really done that is KBD fans. Every other designer, I think secretly deep dark down inside is like, is like, I want there to be some rarity to my keyboard. I don't want to, I don't want to create a million of these things. Which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, I think I think having somebody like KBD fans that can just run mass production and units um, to an extent of their keyboards is great. Um, you know, and I think at the same time too that you know having rarity in something and having something enthusiast great is is also nice. Um, you know, I don't think anyone would want to see. TGR come out and start mass producing nine tens. I think that that would, 
I think that that would like anger a lot of his base, if you will. Um, so, anyways, Avu, what's going on? I'm gonna try and screw this weight in a little bit more. It's shifting just a little bit as we're sitting here. Oh yeah, it's because the hardware wasn't screwed in all the way. That'll make a difference. I'm glad that we didn't lose the weight out of the bottom of our case there. All right. Yo, I'm all for nine tens for everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I don't think TGR is built on artificial scarcity. I think TGR is built on a as a as a I think TGR was a product of his environment when he started. When TGR started designing boards, people weren't out there purchasing a million of them. Like there was a time and place where you could buy the first Jane uh, CE board uh, for like $600, $700. Like, and they wouldn't move. Like somebody would put up a Jane CE and uh, it, you know, it only have the internal weight on it and nobody would want it. Like it would sit on mech market for like weeks and people would be like constantly looking for trades or selling it. Like, so I think, I think Sam started up and you know, the relationships that he has with his manufacturers are such that, you know, they're not scaled for product, you know, mass production. And that's not, that's not, that wasn't his strategy when he initially went out and started the whole thing. Like, you know, he was like, he was like, I've got ideas that I want to design and bring to keyboards. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to deal with the headache of, you know, a million different you know skews and orders and all of that um how much is the board that i'm building currently uh i think the the uh the montage is running in and around like the 1200 dollar range um i'm not i'm not 100 certain um <laughs> rama's rama's design rama's approach is completely different also what's up dale yeah, and your 910 was absolutely nuts. We need to get that guy to sell that to me. I would love to have that 910. <laughs> I am taking so long with this keyboard build tonight. Chat, I apologize. I apologize, I'm getting distracted. I apologize, but at the same time, I'm answering your question. So if you guys want me to move through this keyboard faster, just stop talking to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Chat is popping off though. I appreciate you guys being so active tonight. Tonight's a fun stream so far. Rama Rama takes his time though. Like Rama Rama opens up unlimited group buy for like a month. Um, but uh, but Rama at the same time, um, you know, will will have quality control issues and he'll send it back. And so you know you know he'll take. You know, if normal if normal group by production timelines are you know say say three to six months, Rama will take six months to a year, and he won't think twice about it. He'll be like he'll be like, you guys want a perfectly QC'd product, and that's what I'm going to give you. It's going to take as long as it takes. And so I think I think Rama also just kind of has his production line and his manufacturing, and he has that all he has that all so ironed out now at this point too. To where you know it, he's he's able to do what he does in such an efficient way, um, you know, in such an experienced way. I mean, you're someone was at, uh, asking Dodo was asking in chat about you know bringing boards, bringing new designs into it, and like you know, I mean, it you can't as a new designer you can't really look at Rama and TGR and Keycolt. You know, they've already gotten to the point where you know they're established. Um, I'd recommend more looking at someone like Bizarami right now. Like Bizarami is still fairly new in the design game, um, and you know his first his first keyboard I think was the KFE, and that was that was just a small private run of basically an OTD Koala, um, and so. Uh, you know, but it allowed him to sort of like, you know, spread his wings and change up a couple little things and, you know, bring, I think the first thing that he brought different than the Koala, obviously, was the polycarbonate finish to it. Um, and so...
<laughs> the weight. Wow, 1200. The weight looks so cheap. Um, so the weight, uh, the weight is actually got a pretty nice look to it on the outside. Uh, the inside was less of a finish with more brush marks, more uh, dispersed brush marks. The back weight uh, that's actually viewable, it has a nicer finish to it. Let me show you. So this, this here, it has a very uniform. Uh, it was sandblasted first, and focus, please. Focus, please. There we go. It was sandblasted first, and then it was brushed. So that's a purposeful brush. So I think the weight. I think the weight looks pretty sharp. And then it also has the little montage, like little stainless steel badge there up top too. I think it's a pretty sharp keyboard. Uh, it is more of a basic-ish uh, weight design though. Um, so I mean, it, it, it's not it's not anything innovative with the weight design for sure. I'd agree with you there. I'm putting them in every other hole so that I uh, so that I don't have any issues with the the plate uh, pushing down um, uh, all the way uh, and kind of like bowing in places. Uh, and uh, I'm putting them in every other hole because then that limits me about 50% chance, 50% less of a chance that I will have any of these little switch stems bend on me when I drop the, the plate onto the PCB. I don't think we'll have fitment and tolerance issues with this because this PCB has been used once already, um, but, uh, but this is kind of just a force of habit for me. RS so lit. It has been so lit. Bizarami has literally lit that thing on fire on a couple on a myriad of occasions. I want the one that he lit on fire. I would love to have the RS that he grilled up some steaks on. <laughs> uh, the weight is just plain though. Review. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, you got it. It's it's just kind of more of a simplistic uh, design, if you will, for the weight on this guy. And so now we'll drop the plate down here. And as you can see, all these switches that we've installed here kind of allows us to push these guys in and the plate doesn't bow down. What you get if you, if you, okay, so the other way to do this, if you put the plate right down onto this and then just start with no switches in here, just start pushing them in. I know this is my space bar. If you start just pushing them in, what happens is the plate ends up uh, doing one of these numbers with the PCB, and then you end up having to go through with like, you know, a screwdriver and like lifting the plate up to, uh, to, get, the, to get the switches in the right spot. Whereas now I'm able to just, you know, drop switches into this guy without any fear or concern of the plate doing that to me. Yeah. RS was a uh, another TKL. Uh, it was a TKL that was designed by Bizarami. It had a it had an LZ side or it had a spin. It had a spin on an LZ side profile. Lang, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for the three months. Enjoy your three months Max F badge. That's what's up. My favorite keyboard that I own, probably my 910. How you doing, girl? Oh, you know. Every day is a good day that we're building a keyboard. Holding Unveil RS in my lap right now. Dale, when are you sending that thing over to me? When are you getting the switches in? Let's go. I'm ready. Hey, what's up, Abdul?
Why is this MOBO different than any other MOBO? When you say when you say MOBO, do you mean do you mean like the PCB? Uh uh huh. Uh, this PCB is shit. <laughs> That's how it's different than all the others. <laughs> this is a this uh, quite candidly is a garbage PCB. Uh, the fave PCBs are probably outside of Liku, uh, my least favorite PCBs to work with. Um, <sighs> Right. Uh, well, so super user, I think there's a via port already out there for this thing. We will be putting that to the test here tonight. Actually, can somebody in chat um, link me the via configurator page if this is on there? Can somebody check and see if it's already, if it's like easy peasy, lemon squeezy, I can get this thing up into into boot mapper and map this thing we'll be putting via on it tonight otherwise i do have the fave firmware on here um okay so uh if you're if you're to answer your question uh though uh uh is it uh dumb liberal nice uh to answer your question um Basically, uh, some some designers still use their proprietary firmware, and uh, and so they they send their keyboards um, locked down or locked down to. They give you some options, but not many. Like they give you weird. Uh, you know, uh, you can change the orientation of some keys, but not others. Um, and so it's basically just your ability to remap keys that makes this keyboard uh, firmware kind of a pain in the ass. Um, from a pure use perspective, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with this PCB. Um, in this day and age, I'd like to see a return to thinner PCBs, but that's just personal preference. That's just personal preference on that one. All right, let me see here real quick. Um, I just want to make sure all these. I want to make sure all these sound good before we move on with installing too many of the keys. If it sounds good with my beater keycaps, you know it's gonna sound good with, uh, with the real deal. Nice. Yep, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, the Dollinger? Yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, I've i built my whale uh, with the fave PCB and I did it purely for an aesthetic purpose. <laughs> um, I should I should give it to you, Michael, so that you can uh, so that you can port it to via if it's not already there. <clears throat> I'll give that I'll give it to you when we next meet up. <laughs> I'll bring it I'll bring it with me. I'm assuming it's not on the website. There's no via configurator for it on there. Oh man, that one crunched. Uh, so there's only one wireless keyboard I can think of off the top of my head, which I would consider. It's the HHKB uh, hybrid. Um, uh, everything else I just happen to use is 
wired. Uh, it's not necessarily from a anti-wireless standpoint that I say that. Um, it's more so from just things I like are built with a wire. Um, so uh, I'd be fine with a wireless keyboard. Uh, it's just uh, the designs I like and tend to gravitate towards are all wired. I have been talking the talk about getting an HHKB hybrid, one of the new hybrid, the HHKB3, the Pro 3s, the hybrid one with a Bluetooth adapter on it. I've been talking about that for so long. I really, I want to get it so that I have, like right now, my keyboard's unplugged. With my DAC here, I don't have the real estate to have a keyboard plugged in right now. And so I would love to just have an HHKB right over here off to the camera so I could actually type while I'm on stream. Yeah, those hybrids are expensive though. They're like 280. And we don't know love like we should. Canoe Gen 1 is wireless? Oh, nice. What about the Gen 2? Have you guys seen that? We had a couple of Gen 2 canoes starting to show up. right I mean that's what that's what HHKB is just go straight up membrane yo So we're loading these keycaps up here, guys, just to make sure that as we build uh, these switches, uh, specifically the ones I'm loading up, uh, have a tendency. Uh, they are the ones that have a tendency of getting crooked. And so I always put keycaps, or most times, not always, shouldn't deal in absolutes. Most of the time I put keycaps on when we're going through the build process to ensure we don't run into an issue with that sort of thing. Nothing crooked will be tolerated. All right, I've got a couple of switches that need to have their pins straightened out, I'm sure. I know I ran into at least one. Mounchi, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. Enjoy the your stick. Make Max rebuild. You don't have to make me rebuild it. I'll I'll rebuild it. <laughs> What's up, Gavin? Thank you very much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. This PCB also just has a lot going on for no reason. It's fine. Again, it's fine. But there's a lot going on on this PCB and I don't see why. Switch went flying. <laughs> What's up, by the way, Dale? We were talking about Oxbloods earlier in the stream. And you know what we didn't talk about yet? We didn't talk about Slasher yet. Chat. Who is hyped? 
for GMK Slasher. Any fans of red on black up in chat? I mean, come on. That's an easy clap. Oh, you know what Dale and I were talking about too the other day, chat, that you guys might be interested in? Who, who would jump in on some Max F merch? If I were to run a t-shirt by, are you guys interested in something like that? Very simple, just like a like maybe one or two color options, like maybe a white and a black with like just a simple Max F logo. We'll do we'll do just like you know a good polyester cotton blend tee. Run it on like custom ink or something like that. I haven't used uh, the Streamlabs marketplace, and I don't know how that operates in terms of returns. I obviously would not be running this for profit. This would just be, you know, a buy for some merch. Like, I don't think I would, I don't think I would mark these up. I would more or less just run them to run them, at least for the first round, to see how well they are received. Do a 910 shirt. Uh, we already did that. We already did the TGR shirt. I've have I have a couple of TGR shirts. I have a TGR hoodie as well. <laughs> We're almost getting to the point where I can wear the hoodie in the office. I probably could. It's a little chilly in here. Max F. I would buy a Max F edition Jane V too. Yeah, you and you and everyone else on the face of the planet. <laughs> You know what I'll say to that? To that, I say be patient. I uh, I hate talking about it now because we ran into a little bit of delays with it, but we have got we have got projects on the pipeline or in the pipeline. That if you are looking for a Max F Jane V2, I'm not saying I'll get you a Max F Jane V2, but there might be some projects in the works that you guys will be excited about. More details, TBD. All right, we're almost ready. We're almost ready to start soldering. This is using the fave PCB uh, HP KB. The ever lovely fave PCB. Uh, I am, in my opinion, not that fast of a typer. Uh, I'm generally in and around like the 100 to 120 words per minute range. I'm not, I'm definitely not the fastest keyboard content streamer you'll see out there. I think, I think just about every keyboard content streamer is faster than me. I think Nathan is popping off somewhere around like the 140 to 160 range, I think. Uh, Chubies. Chubies is a damn wizard. I think he types somewhere in like 180s. Um, Lulz. Lulz Thax is a pretty fast typer. Um, who else? Uh, who else types quick? Um, Lightning. Lightning types in and around like the 120s uh, plus, I think. Andy's fast too. Yeah, Andy's, Andy's a quick typer. I would like to see Andy's versus Chubies in a typing test. Andy's v Chubies would be good. Yeah, Chubies does have that whole whole blog. Also, what's up, Dolman? Good to see you, buddy. How much would you charge me for a modifier modification on a 65%? Uh, so if we're just doing like a spot treatment and I can get to the stabilizers with the keyboard being unbuilt with super lube then I would charge you zero doll hairs um, let me let me tell you what you should do if you can get to it let's just do this now I would not charge you anything for this I would not recommend you send it to me for this super lube needle nose tip right pretty simple take the super lube put the needle nose tip into the stabilizer 
opening right there and just inject it up and see if that fixes it. Just inject that thing in there, pop the keycap back on it and see if it fixes it. If it doesn't and you want to get critical on it, if you want to get OCD on it, then you're going to need to desolder, take the stabilizers off, properly tune them, and put the keyboard back together. In that instance, I charge $20 per hour for desoldering. I typically finish all desolders in an hour or less, and I charge a flat rate for 65%, which I think is $55, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. Um, it's on there on Discord though. Uh, join, join Discord and reach out to me in Discord if you're interested in something like that. I would be more than happy to help. Lightning is fast chubies? I didn't think lightning was as fast as chubies. I see lightning somewhere in like the 140s. Yes, that is also true. I have some syringes here, but they're not they're not actually as good as what I would I would get. Like so here's another syringe. You can probably get them even thinner than this, but this one's kind of nice because this one doesn't um, waste anything. Uh, it, it basically like you, know, the, you see the point there almost goes all the way to the tip of the syringe So you waste very little loop, but uh, yeah, you can get even you can get even thinner syringes than that And then yeah, you can you can potentially uh, you can potentially fill up your your stabilizer with lube uh, Remotely if you will, you know without having to take everything all apart and that would be that would be ideal for you That way you don't have to spend all that money shipping it around getting it desoldered or going through the process of desoldering yourself all right chat now that we're done tuning everything up i'm going to wash my hands real quick because i've got lube on them and i don't want crytox to sit on me and i can put the lube away and so give me just a second we're going to start soldering here in just a minute though as i'm about two hours into this build my god chat really has been popping off tonight I've been talking a lot. Not a bad thing at all. But, uh, but man, this build is uh, taking a while. All right, fam. I'll be back in just a moment. Good opportunity to grab a refill if you're not, if you're not drinking already. Thank you. 
Do I have that in my tools for you? If you look on the right side for the Amazon blacksmith, which is an overlay in chat, which should be, or overlay on your screen, which should be like right there. Look up at my webcam. Should be right down there. Does that have, does that have the uh, Super Lube uh, link in Amazon there? You should be able to find it on Amazon pretty easily though. Just search, search Super Lube and just find the one in the needle nose tip. I think there's something like, I think there's something like eight to $10 or something like that. Nothing to it. Okay. There's the case hardware, microfiber, tools. More case hardware here, which is fine. That can sit there. We're done with our paintbrush. We are just getting prepped up for the soldering portion of the stream. I promise chat, we will complete this build. <laughs> we will complete this build. I'd say normally at like the two and a half hour mark, we're probably into soldering and maybe getting closer to finishing it. Whereas tonight we're just now starting it. That's all good though, we'll make it. All right, let's see if I have RTX voice working. Yes, that's a good question, someone. Um, I, uh, I I haven't gotten direction from the client on that. Uh, Robert, if you're here and you want to chime in with uh, with how you would like it mounted. Um, oh, 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 and good thing I caught it too. Good thing I looked at chat. So uh, I will also switch this up. We're going standard caps lock, not stepped. So that is an option. Yep, I was on automatic pilot just thinking we were doing stepped, not standard. I remember you did tell me we wanted to go standard. There we go. There's my standard caps lock. Voila. Good catch, good catch. That wouldn't have been that big of a deal had I soldered it, but man, good catch. All right. Um, yeah, so Robert. Uh, yeah, same. I use I use caps as control all the time too. I'm just used to I'm just used to the placement of stepped now at this point to where having a stepped key for control doesn't bother me either. Um, okay, so my question though is, I believe there's a couple different mounting options for this. Um, I don't know if it necessarily matters too much whether we go top or bottom, um, but, but you do have an option there and how you would like the plate mounted into the case. All right, hold on one second, chat. Hopefully you guys don't lose me here. Test, test. Okay, nice. All right, so that's on, and now we'll also change this so that you guys can't hear my fan noise. Boom. Okay, that should be good. All right, and we are ready to begin some soldering action here, chat. Let me give you guys a close up. Soldering cam is live. Let's go. All right, everybody. So for those of you who are new to keyboard content, I haven't said it yet, but welcome to my channel. My name is Max. I go by Max F and uh, I do keyboard streams twice weekly on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Uh, you are watching me build currently tonight a Lin Works montage. Lin is the name of the designer. The montage is the name of the keyboard. It's a 10 keyless keyboard that we're building it up with cherry retooled blacks. They've been tuned up and filmed. They're ready to go. 
and we are soldering. So for soldering, I always start with the four corners. And on top of that, I use a technique I call the Woden method. Woden was uh, one of the earliest keyboard content creators, and he would do build streams live on YouTube. And this was a technique I learned from watching his streams, where he would solder in one pin first, and then with using his index finger on the switch, he would make this joint molten, push the switch so that the switch is making a good contact point with the PCB plate and uh, everything else in between, and then you would take the soldering iron off the joint so that it would then reharden it and lock that switch into place. So we're going to do that here with these four corners. And then we will solder that second pin to truly complete those four switches. I do the four switches of the PCB first as well. Kind of as in everything, right? With uh, with four corners, I want to lock. I want to lock those guys in place so that nothing is shifting or moving around as I am soldering. Yeah, absolutely, Ryu. So, uh, first things first, I have on this switch right here up in the top left, only a single one of the two pins soldered right now. This pin right here has nothing on it. This pin right here has got solder float onto it. I make this joint molten by touching my soldering iron to it as I'm white knuckling basically the switch. Basically, this is the motion. I'm white knuckling it, I make this thing molten, I make sure that the switch is completely, I do it in reverse order, right? I make it molten first so that the switch will push through properly. Molten. I push the switch through, I take the soldering iron off the joint while I'm still holding it, and then I release. So now this joint is hardened up again. It's not moving anywhere. And it's got the switch pushed completely through. So yep, that's going to complete the switch here now with a touch here on every one of the four corners. I've already done that, that method to them to ensure that Each of these joints are good. Just a little tip to help your keyboard build go a little bit easier. Exactly. Now, depending upon uh, your keyboard build, you may find that uh, your switches uh, may require that technique all along the line, depending upon what you're building. Uh, I am not finding that. I am not seeing any separation between uh, the bottom housing of the switch and the top of the PCB. You see it there, how there's no separation? As long as that doesn't exist, you can be confident that you're getting a good contact point. And, uh, and, and so I am, I'm confident. I can go ahead and just solder this entire row here with uh, without any fear of those contact points not being good. So that's nice. It's a nice quality of life build here for us this evening. Don't have to worry about being too finicky with the PCB work. And so yep, I'm just gonna work my way down each and every single one of these rows. At the reset of each row, every time I start a new row, I always work my way down the row, pushing in all the switches again. Just making sure that everything has been pushed down as far as it'll go. I always do that as I work down the PCB. It's not that big of a deal at the end of the day, but I mean, as long as you have the first, as long as you have the four corners in there. Yeah, because you definitely don't want to get any warping going on with your PCB getting pulled in any one direction or another. And so getting the four corners in first, that'll prevent that from happening. So. 
So and again, as I was mentioning, yep, uh, I do keyboard content twice weekly on Tuesday and Thursday nights, typically. Every now and then you guys will get an extracurricular stream out of me, but uh, but uh, real quick, just uh, I'm going to go up on my salesman pitch here for just a moment and talk to you guys about my service first. So I offer build services for uh, for clients. If you're watching one of those right now this year, this evening. You might think, man, Max, you're taking a lot of time with this keyboard build. You're really being precise and treating it as if it were one of your own. That's what I go for. If you get me to build something for you, you can expect that level of focus for your build too. So if you're maybe new to the keyboard hobby and looking to have someone build your keyboard, if you're not confident with this process, or if you don't have the tools or anything else in between, consider utilizing me for your next build service. How's that? How's that sales pitch? That's it for me. I'm not going to pitch anything more. What was that? What was that? 30 seconds review? I kept that one pretty quick, right? <laughs> Uh, we've talked about this before, Dale. Yeah, my first my first build was actually a 910 as well. I'd had a couple of other customs that I had worked on, but actually from start to finish, my first build was a 910 CE. It was uh, one of those warm gray 910 CEs. Hey, thank you so much for the follow there, Peachy. I appreciate that. Ah, Yeffy, I think you've heard it once or twice before, so no, but you know what's coming next. Now I get to talk about my sponsors real quick. Oh god, no, he's going to try and sell us something. No, I'm not. Do whatever you guys feel like doing. But I just want to thank the people that support my stream. So, right up the top, if you guys are looking for the latest in anything that ends with an EOS, that is Zelios, Helios, Helios, and whatever else, consider zealpc.net. And on top of that, consider using my link to give me, well, Simon said earlier, I was laughing. Simon was like, consider using my referral link to give me, not you, me, 69% off my next order. <laughs> For realsies, though, that is a referral link down below to zealpc.net. And a big shout out to Zeal, as always. Thank you for the support. And that referral link goes a long way to helping support the stream. Thank you so much for using it. If you're going to zealpc.net to buy anything off of his site, which you should consider doing if you are looking for a switch or stabilizer or perhaps some lubricants. Next, I want to shout out the key dot company. The key dot company is uh, partnered up with me and we brought you guys some cool projects in the past with that TKC 1800R. That was a special one for Larry Chen, who's a pretty big automotive photographer. I was excited to be part of that project. Mods by Ben Key on Instagram has still got that one, but uh, but but it should be getting over to Larry here soon. Uh, Mods by Ben Q has done the PC build for that. If you guys haven't followed him on Instagram, uh, Mods by Ben Q is absolutely nuts. The product photography photos that he takes looks straight up like renders. It's absurd. And so he built the PC for Larry Chen, and I built the keyboard for him. And the PC and keyboard are in the same exact paint color as his very old school orange Datsun sports car. And the reason it is not with Larry right now is because we're waiting for these 30 series cards. We didn't want to give Larry a 2080 for it to just be replaced almost immediately. And so I think Ben is waiting for one of those, for one of those uh, 3080s to be able to slap in that build. But anyways, back to the key company. Big shout out to them and thank you for the support. Um, they have 
got all sorts of switches uh, available or not available, group by some of them on their website, um, as well as the C3 stabilizers. I think the big thing right now on the key dot company is the C3 stabilizers and the artisan mouse mats uh, that you can find on their website at the moment. Um, and, uh, and so definitely consider taking a look at the key dot company and their wares. And then we're also sponsored by mintautumn.com, Jack Static and Mint Autumn. Jax is the founding subscriber of my stream. There will always be a special spot in my heart for Jax. Jax is responsible for the Rukia keyboard, which should be shipping very soon. And he's got some other exciting projects that he will be sharing with you guys very, very soon. So you will find down below a link to mintautumn.com, which you should absolutely bookmark and join his Discord if you have not already for product updates. Jax and Dax are jacked to the max. <laughs> nice with you. I'm so excited for Rukia. I am so excited. I just want to be on another carbon fiber plate with a polycarbonate case. And Jax has done some crazy, like, same, same universal, like, path, like, carbon fiber treatment to where, like, all the threads of carbon fiber are all running the same direction to apparently give it a little bit more flex than what you would normally get in carbon fiber. Like, uh, he's been talking to me about it. I'm lost in the details of it, but it sounds cool. I can't wait to try it. And as always, we love you, Jax and mintbottom.com. And then also, last but not least, we are sponsored by Project Keyboard. Project Keyboard, I think, has just closed out. If not, it's closing out soon. The Dolt, the rerun of the OG, it's GMK Dolch R5, I think. So if you guys are in the market for a Dolch set, absolutely consider heading on over to Project Keyboard and taking a look at that. It would be supporting not only Project Keyboard, but also Lightning. Lightning is the designer of that key set. Well, the designer, he's the one rerunning it. Love Lightning. We love Diego over here too. And I don't know if it gives you a kickback. Um, I don't know if it gives me a kickback on GMK sets, but there's a link to Project Keyboard or a referral link down there below as well for Project Keyboard. Big thank you to those sponsors. And with that, that's my that's my full sponsor. Who in that chat? Working our way through soldering here. Here in the Yeah, Dolch ended. Okay. Yeah, Dolch ended. Yeah, so I don't think there's a group by currently running the project here. Am I wrong? This is a TS80P. Um, I went with the TS80P over the TS100 for a couple of reasons, actually. Um, while I like the look of the grip a little bit more on the TS100, uh, uh, the TS80 has got just a single USB charger, and it comes with a it comes with a nice cell phone sized USB charger. Where the TS100, you had to like figure out a power source. And so this is like a one-stop shop item with the TS80P um, on Amazon. You can pretty much get this one and you're good to go, which is a single package. It makes me laugh. There is a firmware update for the TS80P. Like, I don't know what it does, but I have not updated to it, obviously. 
I sh you know what they should add? They should add like memes. I should have a Nyan cat that's constantly flying down the LED of my soldering iron as I'm working on keyboards. That's what I want. Once the firmware update adds that, then I will plug this into my computer and actually update it. Until then, it's just getting plugged into the surge protector and being used to solder a keyboard, which is the only thing I could ever foresee needing it for. And it doesn't need a firmware update for that. So lo and behold, I'm not updating the firmware. I like PCBs that add the letters on the end of it. Artisan soldering irons when? That would be funny. I would I would go in on an, on an artisan soldering iron. That would be cool. <laughs> Damascus. Damascus steel tips. Any uh, any knife collectors in here? Any everyday carry uh, people up in this chat? I need to get a new knife. The knife I had that was nice, I actually lost. And so the knife I have currently is pretty, pretty peasant tier. The knife I have currently is like straight up like Home Depot, Stanley. Like it's sharp. I definitely have a good edge on it, but uh, but it is, it is not a good look. I don't, I obviously don't like wear that on me. Whereas if I had a nice knife, I would I would actually wear that. And when I did have a nice knife and I wore it, I I always found a use for it. It was always so nice having a knife on me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Norbauer is such a freak. I love I love Ryan Norbauer. So, I don't know why, but have you guys seen the show What We Do in the Shadows? Because I know Yeffy has. Yeffy, does Norbauer kind of remind you of the energy vampire? <laughs> I mean, not from like a personality perspective, but you know what you could say at the same time? From a personality perspective of an outsider who's not a community, like a keyboard enthusiast, if you just had a random person talking to Norbauer about keyboards, he would be literally both a an aesthetic and also a well not uh, not an aesthetic uh he would look and sound like like the dude from the show <laughs> like oh god what is this guy talking to me about keyboards does he mean does he mean a computer keyboard what what the hell is this guy talking about <laughs> off camera a little bit this is me just going down the road here yeah, making sure i've got colin robinson that's his name dude that's so funny that show is great i love that show i still i still haven't finished season two i need to get up in there if you guys if you guys have no idea what we're talking about there's uh a show called what we do in the shadows that's basically how can I sum it up? It's basically a vam it's basically a vampire show. Um, but it has like these vampires like 
live, you know, among normal people and they go out and do normal people things like, you know, there's there's a vampire in the house that like trims the hedges into like artistic artistic hedges and you know so they're just they're just totally you know it's basically just a silly goose time every single one of the episodes um but the guy who uh, is behind it um is the same uh guy who did flight of the corn chords as well as the thor ragnarok movie um i mean he's he's absolutely hysterical the guy is a total gem a talented, hysterical guy, for sure. He's a New Zealander. Dude's a Kiwi. And so he, he not only directs it, the show, but he uh, he's an actor in it as well. There's a movie as well as a TV series. Highly recommend it, if you guys have not seen it called What We Do in the Shadows on FXX. I like this. I like this song in this playlist. This is a good one. So what are you guys up to tonight, Yeffy? You guys getting into any trouble? Chilling in the living room? Hanging out? You know if there's going to be a virtual DC keyboard meetup? Um, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd hope to do a, an in-person one. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think... I, at, at least I should say, as it stands right now, it doesn't look like February will be a tenable date for that. Um, so we might we might do something virtual. Um, but if we did something virtual, I, I think I think we're seeing more um, more like just uh, overall, regardless of region uh, meetups um, in uh, what is it? Keep Keep Talk. Or not keep talk. Uh, what was what was the one that Lang did? What was the Discord that Lang did? Um, I know there's going to be a virtual keycon here too this weekend. Virtual keycon this weekend should be good. I think I'm doing a panel on it. I need to figure out what I'm doing. Clock fancy. That's right. Chat, you want to help me figure out what my panel should be? Who should we who should we have on my panel? So I'm thinking, um, so here's here's my thought. Uh, we're having the virtual KeyCon, which I will be I'll be moderating part of it. So I'm assuming I'll kind of similar to how Liam had moderators in the Hello Caps uh, virtual meetup on uh, the June date. Uh, I'm thinking uh, I'll be a moderator like that, but uh, we should uh, we should stream the panel, in my opinion. And so I'll have. I'll have a couple of guests on a panel while everyone's hanging out in the virtual meetup. And those that want to tune in uh, can, you know, ask questions and, you know, hear whatever my panelist discussion is. Man of visuals. What's up? How goes it? So it's actually retooled blocks tonight. I was mistaken. They're not. They're not uh, vintage. They are retooled. And with that, you tuned in just in time. Because we just completed the build. Right, so I'm just going to take a look here real quick. And make sure all of my joints look good. It's always good to just give yourself a one over pass on all of your joints before you flip it back over and put it back together. 
You want to make sure all of your joints look like, you know, nice little peaked Christmas trees on your keyboard. If you see any where you can see like the stem, you don't have enough. If you see any where you can see like uh, the uh, bubbling, you have too much. So just keep that in mind when you're soldering. for the teepees, that's right. Okay. All right, hopefully I don't lose my microphone. If I do, I'll be back in two minutes. Hello, test, test, one, two. Nice, I didn't lose my microphone. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, I can turn RTX voice back off now. Okay, there we go. Is that fan? Is that a fan setup like Tejas? Um, I've not caught a build from Nathan in a little bit. Um, it's just a pretty basic fan. Um, it's actually a computer fan uh, with a uh, carbon fiber filter in the front of it. Um, and it just, uh, it's a fume extractor, essentially. It just extracts all the, so the harmful, leaded soldering fumes and pulls them away from me as I'm, as I'm soldering. I want to build one, but I have no clue where to start. So, he found a good spot to start, uh, right here tonight, Man of Visuals. Um... Uh, to start getting into soldering, um, I would go first to the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit and you'll find on the panel on the right a full guide to soldering and getting started. You can also go to keyboarduniversity.com. Uh, Yeffy, can you cross check me on that one? Can you link, can you link Keyboard University for me properly? Because you'll find all sorts of nice guides on that website as well. And if things are lacking, please feel free to join up in Discord. Mine is linked below and, and ask any questions that you might have. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, try to be, I try to be helpful. If, uh, if I'm not helpful, then what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, why does it not do, you're gonna have to copy and paste that the slow way. I think clicking that link is gonna break because the TY for whatever or reason stops hyperlinking. Yeah, it always does that every single time, Yuffie. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, that's a good that's another good resource. Um that that could benefit from it come some more resource from from some more articles, but I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Um but but yeah you you know you're gonna need a soldering iron you're gonna need I mean there's a whole bunch of components um you know if you've got questions reach out You basically just need some tools. And then for the computer, for the keyboard itself, you need a PCB, you need some switches, and you need a case. Some builds will have a plate. More often than not, they'll have a plate. But some builds, you don't need a plate. I would recommend going with a build that has a plate for your first build. However, Building plateless for your first build could be a little bit difficult. You add in some elements of soldering that your technical abilities would need to be a little bit better on. However, plateless builds are fun. Yeah, Yeffy, it's just it's just total something. Try putting it in brackets. I don't know. Something rips that link apart. Um, here's a plateless build, for example. This keyboard right here, we actually built one of these guys up and gave it away. This keyboard right here is plateless. It's not the greatest sounding board. Let me put it down on the desk. But it's not bad either.
I think these are stock Gateron black switches. For stock, it's definitely not bad. And you get this, you get this going on too with, with plate builds. That's a good spot right there. Look at that. Wherever I can find a spot that there's no like standoffs in the tray mount, that'll flex a lot. <laughs> so you get a little more flex in a plate in a plate only build than and this keyboard right here would cost you, uh, depending upon what components you have on hand. If you have zero components on hand, you could probably build this exact keyboard up for like less than 150 bucks, minus keycaps. And you could build it so much nicer than I have it right now. These aren't lubed switches, and so you could get this sounding so much better. That's the tech keys. The tech keys, 60%. I might reach out to them and see if they want to do another giveaway. That one was really well received. Cause it's a cool sounding, it's a cool sounding and cool feeling board. People I feel like are so up in arms against like tray mount. Tray mount's not that bad. I mean, it's not great. But if you're just getting into the hobby, tray mount is not that bad. Tray mount is a great spot to start. Whoa, are you just getting into the hobby and you went with a Discipline 65? Because that, sir, is intense. Oh yes, yeah, so you're not you're not just getting into Wait, hold on. Up top you said up top you said you wanted to build one, but you have no clue where to start, and now you're saying down below you've built keyboards for clients. Now I'm now I'm confused. Did you mean when you said you wanted to build one but you had nowhere anywhere to start? You're talking about the fan? Oh, <laughs> okay, I gotcha. I was totally, I was totally confused. Okay, um, yeah, what the hell am I being nice for? Man, that's what I get for being nice. I got baited. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're good, we're good. <laughs> Thanks for the follow away, Paksama. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure somebody in chat I've helped. Hopefully, <laughs> go Sue Teddy. Thank you for the follow as well. I'm sure I'm sure I helped somebody in chat there by doing by going through all of that. <laughs> all right, so here is the top case here. So it is the moment we have been waiting for. Um, we need to figure out if we're going to. I, I don't, really don't think it matters whether we mount bottom or top. I'm just going to mount top for this guy. Um, because that's what I normally do. Normally I top mount boards. But yeah, I think you can, I think you can mount this thing to the bottom as well. Let's take a look here. Yeah, see, I think you can use, I think you can use these pieces of, I think you can use these inserts here to mount on the bottom as well. Interesting. I've not seen that before on a keyboard. I don't think it matters. I mean, What's the, isn't the, isn't the Iron 165 a top mount board, but it actually mounts into the bottom? Gosu, welcome. Greetings from Trinidad and Tobago. Very cool, welcome. Greetings from the United States. I'm just outside Washington, DC. Welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for the follow. That's cool. I love I love uh, seeing seeing people from regions I've never seen before get into the hobby. That's very cool. I had uh, not that this is a region that I hadn't seen before, but I had somebody uh, send me uh, my Bingsu set came from a collector who's out in Hawaii. 
And so when I saw the shipping notification come to me at first, I was like, I was like, oh, that's something, that's an address you don't see every day. DMV gang, that's right. Iron is gasket. Yes, it, it is. You're absolutely right. Um, what was I thinking of that's that's bottom mount? I can't I can't remember now. What was I thinking of chat? I was thinking of something that was that was bottom mount. But bottom mount, I mean for all intents and purposes, bottom mount is the same thing as top mount. I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna make too big of a difference. Oh, and K65 is bottom mount? Okay, cool. No, I don't mind asking anything. Uh, yeah, we're we're just as much of uh, audio and video lovers in this channel as we are keyboard fans. Um, uh, the uh, the amp and DAC here is the Audi 2, uh, the Audi 2 uh, FS. So it's actually just a it's a DAC, but it has an amp built in, so it's kind of an all-in-one. Um, and then uh, the controller that I have my mic plugged into over here is a uh, is a Babyface, uh, the RME Babyface Pro. And I've got a set of IEMs that I'm pairing with the Audi 2 right now, but I've got a I've got a set of Alice coming in. The ZMF Alice is uh, is on the way. Should be here on Friday. I am so excited. Spence, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. I did not, but it is 3D printed, Man of Visuals. It's actually gifted to me from uh, from a buddy of mine um, who uh, also gifted me this really cool keycap. Let me show you guys. It is 3D printed. It is 3D printed. This guy right here. This guy was sculpted by Dana. Um, <laughs> love this guy. The cigar. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. I'll tell you guys. Um, that is that is uh, Randy Randy Bruiser. That sculpt is called Randy. I think it's Randy Bruiser is what Dana named it. Yeah, I love that. I love that one. Uh, so Spence, the build command will give you the full details, but this is a Lin montage uh, built up with Cherry MX retooled black switches, and we are using the C3 stabilizers with it. And we are just about done mounting it. This keyboard almost looks like it could be just sandwich mount too. It's a shame the tolerance isn't a little bit tighter so that you could do that. Uh, the plate moves around a little bit, but it's very close to being able to be sandwich mount as well, which I would personally like. I love sandwich mount. You don't see that as much these days. Sandwich map is such a good option. Yeah. Yeah, Lynn hasn't really gotten it right, has he?
So one thing I do appreciate about Lynn's selection of hardware, this is such a small quality of life thing, but he uses the same hex screw size for both the plate and the case hardware, which is nice. Am I gonna go for the box, the box 75? 75% are not my thing. So I won't personally, uh, but I would, I would love to build one for someone. I don't think I've seen the box 75 as a matter of fact. Is that going into group by here soon? Oh, you know what I need to do too? This is one of those keyboards. I need to loosen up all four corners and ensure I have the seam lined up. guy down Sam you would know you would know better than anyone <laughs> Simon I asked Simon what he's using to uh, um, oh thank you to the anonymous gifter there for uh, gifting a tier one to Man of Visuals. Oh wait, Man Oli, Man Oli, Man Manoli, Manoli Vis Visuals. Yes, I've I tuned into your stream for the first time the other day. And hold on, what do you say? What do you say when you get a subscription? It's something like, did you just dip, did you just dip your, your hat into, or your hand into the gabagool of fire? <laughs> you said something when you got a subscription that was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> you had a 12 hour stream the other day too. I saw you, I saw you on your 12 hour stream as well. How'd that, how'd that go? Yep, I'm, I'm just, uh, forgive me, I'm just a fucking idiot. <laughs> so, so forgive me for not, for not realizing who you were at first. I, I know who you are. Uh, chat, so, uh, so toss, toss, uh, Manoli Visuals a, a follow as well. He's another keyboard content creator if you're not already. He's a, he's a great charismatic guy too on chat, so definitely support him as well. <laughs> That's so funny. Like it took me, that took me so long to put that together. Cause I thought your name was man of visuals at first. I was like, I was like, that's not the same. And that's not what your name is. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, it ended up running 21 hours. Oh man, nice. That's nuts. Very cool. Uh, I'm gonna get the gambling thing worked out. I, I'm, I don't have the gambling thing right right now. I was talking to Simon though, Sam, and uh, I was trying to get I was trying to get the gambling thing working properly because he's using stream elements, which is the same profile I want to use as well. My points are in Streamlabs, and my my uh, my the better points one, the max oofs that are titled that are tallied up below. Those are in stream in a different platform. Whatever you guys don't give a shit about that. The the short story is I'm gonna get that thing working with the max oofs instead. That'll be my that'll be my stream coin name. You guys will earn you guys will earn max oofs as you watch me. That is true, Gosu. They are sold out everywhere. Okay, let's dress this thing up. I got a new keycap set for me, new for me, any other day. We're gonna be putting this thing on here.
That's right. Earn yourself a big oof. I think this set, I think this set will look really good with black as well. So I think, I think you guys will like this chat. I think this one will look pretty good. We're gonna do GMK waves for tonight. I normally pull this, but I just got this set in and so I'm vetoing all of you in chat. We're just putting waves on. Let's, uh, before we dress it all up, make sure before I put my keycaps on it, let's just make sure real quick that the keyboard is sitting pretty. Six key rollover for shame. Come on, fave. Why are you such a piece of shit firmware? <laughs> See, that's that's my problem with fave. It's just not. It's just not my favorite. It's not my favorite. Oh, is that a, is that a Chubis emote? The Chubis wave. What's up, Solji? How's it going? Oh, Spence is your mod? Nice. Well, yeah, welcome. Welcome, guys. Very cool. We got the whole crew up in here tonight. Do you guys think the accent key? I don't really like the accent key as much. I think I'm just gonna go with the straight up, straight up same, same colors for the mods. I think I like this more, yeah? I think that's the way to go over the green. We like the accent? Accent is clean? I got one for clean and one for it's too bold. Accent's bad, too bold. Yeah, I think I think with maybe like a polycarbonate case you can pull off the accent, but for a black case, I think that this works better. The space bar is really clacky. Okay, it pops nicely. Okay, I'm I'm excited. You're you're hyping up my space bar. Hopefully, hopefully I do not disappoint. Let's see here. Where's my pipe key? Wait, that's not the that's not the one. Where's the pipe key? That's the same color. There it is. There we go. Oh man, an anonymous gifter back again. Thank you for the tier one to Gosu and, and welcome Gosu. Welcome to the Max F fam. Oh yeah, you know we're not messing around, Sam. The tilde, the tilde and the pipe keys we keep on lock. There's no other way. Gift me next. <laughs> I have a I have an anonymous sugar daddy up in up in chat right now. Thank you, whoever you are. I 
I like this set. This set is pretty, especially on black. This looks really good. This thing is gonna picture nicely. Man, waves, waves turned out really good. It just has good contrast. I'm a sucker for any set that just has really good contrast. They are very, they are very electric green, but man, they just look, it looks nice. Yeah, so this is, yep, someone, someone hooked it up with this one. It's a good one. I'd had, I'd had waves kind of on and off a list for a while of mine. And yeah, when you, when you surfaced with it. That was too that was too easy of a deal for me to turn down. My GMK collection has really kicked up. Yeffy, you remember when you were talking trash about how I had nothing except beige? <laughs> yeah. Now we've we've gone we've gone full reversal now. I've got too many GMK sets now. My bookshelf is like literally full of GMK sets these days. Which, by the way, chat, if you've got any GMK trays, please send, please send them to me. If you're like, if you're like, man, I've got this old GMK tray and I just throw these things out, send it over to me instead. Do not throw it out. Beige is all you need. Hey, that's you know that's my that's my general my general go to. Sam, I'm right there with you. But I like I like mixing it up. I like mixing it up for chat for the sake of for the sake of Twitch. I like mixing it up. I had been hunting olive. I had an olive set lined up, uh, but the guy who was going to trade me olive. Um, he like deleted his Discord account. He legit does not exist anymore. He was posting in my personal Discord as well, and he he like in my in the in the Max F Discord, and like all of his messages in the Max F Discord are just gone. They're all gone. So I don't know what happened. He decided he decided this whole thing wasn't for him, I guess. But I was gonna build a volcano 660 for him and he was going to give me GMK Olive and I was actually gonna pay him to build his keyboard. <laughs> he was just gonna take the build service charge right off the top. All right, I like it. I like it, I think that's a clean looking build. Um, we need a different desk mat for this. What should we do for the desk mat? Because Bingsu does not match. You sure he ever existed in the first place? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Whoa, dude, you just blew my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true, Yeffy. It started off, Yeffy wanted nothing. He wanted to see nothing but color on my desk. And now, now I've got all the colorful keycaps and, and Yeffy has, uh, Yeffy is going for beige. Yeffy has discovered. Yeffy has discovered the god tier of beige, and all of its, all of its finer details. All right, let's see here. We are going to go with. Oh, I got it. I got the desk mat for us. I don't have a waves desk mat if that if such a thing exists but I've got a good one that I think will work well with this. Lie flat, please. There we go. Now, that looks a little better. Boom. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, camera's flipped in my other scene so that when I hold, when I do this, which say hello to YouTube, everyone, instead of getting the mirrored effect, you see a keyboard, what it should look like in person. So there's our build for tonight. Looking pretty fresh. Focus, please. Can you guys see that? My fingerprints and the cool little montage logo? It's focused on me. No, I'm sorry, chat, hold on. Focus on my hand. And now quickly grab the montage. There it is. Oh yeah. I could, purely laziness, I teach Gosu. Do you actually teach Gosu Teddy? Cause that's kind of funny. Um, here you go. Uh, here you go, here you go, here you go. Uh, there, are you happy now? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Okay. Put it back. Oh God, no. Switch it back. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's go ahead and see what this thing sounds like. First, let me give you guys some mods. In group buy, I think it was somewhere in like the five to 600 range shipped to the United States. Ooh, that does pop. That sounds nice. Frequency, thanks very much for the follow. What do you think, review? some crisp sounding alphas. I think we can benefit from does this sound does this sound better here chat? I think you won't get as much. All right, so let me know. Hold on. Let me give you a quick comparison. Does this sound better? Or does this sound better? Okay, closer. <clears throat> number one or number two? Also, we can do this so that you can see it better. Or this where you can't see it as well. Can't see in closer. I don't mind not seeing. Okay, cool, that answers that. All right, let's do a typing sounds test. Now hopefully, hopefully, I don't hit this microphone with my hands. <laughs> I'll try not to. Why is that not typing? 
Am I stuck in a mode here? There we go. Beautiful. All right, cool. Oh boy, I enlarged it full screen. Let me get let me get our typing test set up. I think there's a waves option on here. If you guys see it first, tell me. Hammerhead would work kind of good. But I think there's a waves. Next to bliss. There it is. Oh man. Okay, cool. Oh man, you can't see it as I finish typing it. That is some contrast there. Yo, what's up, Archon? You are just making it in time. How's it going? What did um what did you do for spring weight in this one someone It feels a little bit heavier to me If I had to guess this is a this is a 67 gram spring Ah yep okay That's actually pretty incredible that the stock springs are sounding that good. Hey, Sam, thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in, buddy. Yeah, we'll see you next time, man. Have a great evening. chat I can dig it what do y'all think how does that sound for y'all at home how is that sounding for everybody I think we've got a winner winner on our hands here yeah I, I like it I like it um yeah i give i give this thing a good uh i'd say i give this build a good uh eight out of ten eight out of ten on my on my scale of who knows what the points mean and how i came how i came to them <laughs> 
the the main reason I dock points for this one is that the um is that the uh is that the spring weight is too heavy for me. <laughs> yeah. I'd say I'd say like a I'd say like a solid I'd say a solid eight out of ten. I mean it's just it's clean. We were talking about this earlier though. Preference from aesthetic perspective, this is a simple rectangle with no with no real branding to speak of. You have the little montage logo in the back right here, but that's very low profile, and I like the way they did it. You know, it's uh it's a good looking it's a good looking keyboard. Yeah, and I am, and I even gave it, I gave it an 8 out of 10, which again, who knows what those points even mean. Someone, I believe someone tuned, someone in chat, I believe tuned these up. However, you managed to get stock springs not pinging, uh, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> so, well done. Kudos to you. And uh, and yeah, I'd say I'd say successful build is successful. So yeah, congratulations, Robert. You got a good one coming your way. And uh, yeah, very nice. All right, chats. So what else have we got going on? I think that's it for tonight. Who's streaming right now, guys? <clears throat> and what should I do next? Should I go watch? Should I go watch some what we do in the shadows? Ooh, kimchi streaming. Okay, I like that. Uh, what's my personal board? I rotate between a whole lot. Gosu, I'm using the LZ Physics right now. I have a Matrix 1.2. I have a TGR 910. I have a 360 Corsa. I have a Jane. I have a Whale. I have a Unicorn. Um, I have an ogre coming. Um, I have uh, a Rukia coming. I have um, no no end game. I don't have an end game. My end game is once my kids are ready to go to college, I sell off all my keyboards, and that pays for college. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, I can type now. <laughs> Swishiro. Swishiro is who made my cable. You should hit him up and tell him uh, that I sent you. And then maybe he'll give me free cables next time. I always I message him every now and then, be like, hey, you've been getting some clientele. He hasn't told me to he hasn't told me to stop yet because <laughs> yeah people ask me about this cable all the time so this cable specifically um, I got it in uh, the it's a black paracord with a carbon tech flex and the limo connector and I have a USB C and then a USB mini connector and then I also have the same connector in my Corsa He does. He makes he makes all sorts of cables. He does coils. He does. I was just over the coil. The coil was too much for me. I had too much going on on my desk for the coil. Yeah, Doctor Haru, we got we got the collection built in a little bit. Um, what else did I saw? I saw the physics and I had to pick it up. The physics was just the physics was a good pickup. I'm I'm enjoying typing on that thing lately. Um, I'm opening up my spreadsheet here. Oh, I've got the Jane V2 CE coming. I've also got the Little Z coming, and I've got a gasket. I've got a gasket zero zero coming as well. So those are, I think those are all my keyboards. I think all of those are all my keyboards right now. I don't have anything else. Send me, send me keyboards. I don't have enough keyboards. <laughs> oh God, I don't have enough keyboards. <laughs> Trust the trader. Thank you very much for the, for the follow there. What do I think of the Eru? Let me look up said Eru keyboard. Ooh, Helix Lab. Oh, I've seen this. Is that the Egyptian one? Yes. 
Yep, we reviewed this. This keyboard is dope AF. I love this keyboard. I will absolutely try to get one of these. Um, Suishiro is on Discord. Suishiro is on Discord. Uh, this keyboard that we built tonight is not. There's no There's no LED lighting on this, uh, nor is there any way for there to be, aside from you installing LEDs on it yourself manually. And, and I did not do that. I got the physics aftermarket. I got the physics from the guy who owns Switch Couture. He had a physics and sold it to me. I paid I paid aftermarket costs for it actually, uh, but but I like it. I like it. Your end game is the key cult or a Satisfaction seventy five. I built a couple Satisfaction seventy fives. Those are nice keyboards. Again, seventy five percent is not my game, but uh, but yeah, pretty good. Uh, Munchi. The only difference between the build command is actually we, these are retooled blocks, not vintage blocks. So other than that, build command is updated. Look how good that looks. Oof, that's so good. Oh, oh, oh! I forgot too. I have one of the I have one of the new Jaguar keyboards from Elaine coming as well. I'm so I'm so, I would love to get one of these. What's up, Andy? You're building one of these? You're building the Aru? When when did this sale kick off? Dude, heck yeah! Nice. Nice, that's what I'm talking about, Andy. Prices are kept around 420. Lol. Yeah, bro. Keep the price close to 420. Is this this is engraved, right? It's not Anno. Yeah, that's a that's a that's an insane machine. I'm assuming it's machine. Chong, what's up, Chong? Good to see you, buddy. Oh yeah. Man, we got we got all the we got all the cool cats up in chat. Chong and Andy are keyboard creators as well. Chat, if you guys haven't uh, followed those guys, you should do so. All right, so we're not reviewing stuff tonight. We just finished building the Lin montage. I'm I'm migrating over into chill mode right now. Let's see who's streaming. I think I think Kimchi's streaming. I think we're gonna raid Kimchi. Don't let Chubies in here. <laughs> yeah, Chubies is pretty quick. We were talking about that earlier, Andy. We were talking about that earlier. I said I would love to see you and Chubies go head to head. Yeah, I would love to see you guys go head to head. All right, nice. Yeah, Kimchi is in the middle of soldering, so this will be a good time to jump into his stream. We can watch the end of his Haman build. Haman build part two. Nice. That's what's up. Hey, Assassin God, thank you very much for the follow. And Andy's following now, too. What's up? How are you not following me already, Andy? That's toxic, bro. <laughs> All right, chat. Let's do this. Let's raid kimchi. It's all good. We forgive you. Ooh, nice. Yeah, guys, as always, it's a pleasure. Uh, raid channel. Raid channel, kimchi jelly boy. Start raid. There we go. There we are. All right, good. I'm queued up now too. I'm gonna watch Kimchi for a minute as well. Thanks, man. Yeah, so I've got, uh, it's the A6500 on top and then we've got the A7R3 for the face cam. Um, I feel like we've talked, I feel like we've talked uh, video quality in chat before. Um, I think it was in your chat. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you all enjoyed the build. We will be live on Thursday. We've got a KBD 75 build on Thursday. And then I believe I will be off next Tuesday. And then the following Thursday, we'll be building up Arson's 910. I'm gonna be using my 910 SE case for that. So if you guys are curious about seeing my 910 SE, 
in the Doge Meme Edition. Make sure you tune in for that. And I will catch you guys next time. Until then, peace.